Good morning. So, hey, everybody. Yes, yeah, so exciting. Today, we're going to talk about Lori's hometown and BDOT collections, which are in stock. Then we're going to talk about her future collections, which are autumn, hometown holidays, and mercantile. We have a big announcement at the end of the show where we're going to talk about a quilt along for 2024, but we're going to save it to the end. And before we start, we do have a... Um, set of three stitch card boxes free if you place an order for a hundred and twenty dollars shippable order meaning you can't buy like a gift certificate so if you spend a hundred twenty dollars and it ships and you enter this coupon code until sunday is that right jordan mm -hmm. yeah until sunday you get three boxes that's like a 95 dollar value so you guys should use that before we sell out of these and um of course, I would love for all of you to put your questions in. Probably what we're going to do is just go through everything and do questions at the end, unless I can splice them in and out. So let's just start with hometown, Lori, and just kind of tell me what you're doing uh, with hometown and all about your YouTube channel and your blog. Okay, well, I'm doing my sew along right now. I'm right in the middle of the hometown sew along. And so that is, here, I'll just hold up the storyboard. That is the quilt that looks like this on the cover of the storyboard. That's with the houses and then all of the pieced blocks. And so you can see a bunch of pieced blocks behind me because we only need to make 40 only, I'm laughing, only 40 <laughs> for the quilt. They're five inch blocks, but um, I only need to make 40 of them for the quilt, but I'm making 16 of each. And then I'm designing four more because I'm making a bed. I'm making a, a king size quilt for my bed. And so I've been doing the tutorial on each block on my YouTube channel. And I have the houses done if you want to see them. Yeah, I want to see them. Okay, so I'm going to hold them up. Okay, so that's the flag house. Let's see, where am I going to put these? And Here's the topiary house. So there's 12 houses, right? There's 12 houses. Okay. Yeah, here's the pineapple house. So remember, this is what, again, I'm going to show you this picture. So this is what the quilt looks like. And then you have the, the blocks in between the rows. Sunflower house. So pretty. And I'm working ahead a little bit. We're not finishing up for, you know, a couple weeks, but with the totally, you know, completely finished quilt, but I want to try to get it into the quilters. So I'm working a little bit ahead. So, so tell everybody last... about your applique methods that you use if people aren't familiar with it. Well, I, I use so simple shapes and I have a different set for each quilt that I'm doing. Let's see. Let me open my drawer here. Here's the hometown. So simple shapes. And then I use um, sew-in interfacing. And I um, sew them together so that the edges are already turned. And so all you have to do is lay it out on your design board. And you can either pin it or pin and glue, which is what I do. I just use a temporary glue from um, Sue Daly. And um, so the edges are already turned, the shapes are already formed. And so all you have to do is just kind of like play and lay it out, build your houses, and then applique them down either by hand or by machine. And the hometown so. quilt that you're showing right now is called the Hometown Sew Along Guide. And you can download that for free at Riley Blake Designs website or on Lori Holt's blog. Right. So there's no pattern for for my sew alongs. It's, you know, for my sew simple shapes. It's basically the sew along guide. It's just a cutting guide. It's not a pattern, but it just talks about cutting and supplies and things like that. And then I do the tutorials on my channel and my blog. And so this is this this will be this tutorial will be on Monday. These are the two that you're getting a sneak peek of because I worked ahead. And then this is the strawberry house that will be next Friday. 
So do you want to give a little peek and talk a little bit about the king size quilt that you're making and a little bit about well, here's that? The, yeah, here's the peek behind me. <laughs> so I'm making, I'm making, let's see, what did I, over 200 blocks. There's going to be, there's 10 blocks for the quilt and that's what I'm doing so far. Right now there's um, four, I mean eight, excuse me, eight up here you can see and the rows going down here. There's eight of them. And so I'll be doing two more tutorials and then I'll, that's everything that goes into the quilt, but I'm making 16 of each of those blocks. And I'm, these are the five inch size, but below that you can kind of see the 10 inch size that I do here. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of a free cutting on my blog too. So I give all of the cutting on in the sew along guide for the five inch and then all the cutting for the five inch and 10 inch on my YouTube channel. So, okay, so let me show them how they can find all of that. So if you go to Lori Holt's YouTube channel, this is the sew along guide she was talking about. But if you go to her YouTube channel and for example, two days ago, she posted block number seven. If you click on it, and then you click more right here and then you scroll down and you click more again you have the five inch cutting here and the 10 inch cutting here so if you're ever wanting any of her block sizes it's not only in the video when you watch it but it's also down below and that's how you find it for all of you who yeah. didn't know how to do that yeah, I have questions sometimes about I can't find the cutting instructions. So that's where it is. I always do a description in my videos. And so, so far I've done seven and then I'll be filming eight this afternoon when Cass gets off work, she'll be coming over and filming me um, doing number eight. So that video should be up tonight. And that, the quilt that's the sew along finishes at 75 by 84. And the quilt that's going to go on her bed when it's done, then you can find the size when it's done done on her channel. And you can subscribe to her YouTube channel. It's called Lori Holt. And I'm also going to pop up information on how they can find you on your blog. Okay. okay. Also, I wanted to take note too. see how the blocks are in a row here. That's not how it's going to go together in the quilt. They're just in a row because I'm showing you know, block one goes across the top and then two, three, four, you know, clear down to eight. But um, so if somebody wants to get ahead, they need to make how many of each block that you've 16, shown? 16, 16. And I talk about that in my, you know, on my channel. And I, I reveal a little bit more about the quilt because I'm kind of designing as I go along. But now I have finished the design. And so I'll be talking about that um, probably next week just to make sure. <laughs> I don't want to tell all of the details until I've you know, landed on for sure. But you know how it is when you're making a quilt, you're kind of switching things around and deciding what's best. But I do know that you need 16 each of the blocks, of the five inch blocks, if you're going to be making the quilt. Now the 10 inch blocks, I'm gonna be doing a table runner. So I just need one each of those. Okay, so that gives And us I'm using my hometown time. fabric for all of it, but it's part of my Sew Your Stash series. So you could be using your scraps you know, your leftovers, whatever. This is a perfect scrappy quilt. I just happen to be doing using all of hometown for mine. And in the videos, Lori shows step by step how to sew them. So not only do you get the cutting instructions, you get detailed tips and all of that in her channel. I wanted to show you because that's your uh, applique and piece. I want to show quilt seeds, which is your piece <laughs> traditional um, pattern so and we'll talk about your um, calendar in a little bit but the quilt seeds is your paid patterns that Riley Blake publishes there are let's see nine of these and I'm going to show you the blocks because we actually uh, Teresa sewed them here and recently you came out with the new finishing so I want to tell everybody about that because I haven't told told you all that yet but here's a picture of what you download at Riley Blake and this part is free but all of these quilt seeds are paid patterns and I'm going to show you the blocks and how they look and these are all traditionally pieced so the ones she just showed you were applique 
the houses were applique and yes you know, then the blocks are and pieced, the blocks are yeah. pieced. these are pieced and on this one Teresa made all of the blocks and this week you came out with the finishing so we're going to go ahead and finish it. Now we're not offering a finishing kit at Fat Quarter Shop, but you can use a 10 inch layer cake to start and just add yardage. But I really wanted to say, when we offer these quilt seeds as kits, because we sell this as patterns, individual kits, and as a pattern set, we give you a lot of extra fabric. So I would take all that extra fabric and use that for all of these pieces before you start buying anything. Because we always give you a lot extra and then just buy what you absolutely need. And we will have more five inch and 10 inch squares on Tuesday. And you can go to Riley Blake's website and you wanna see a close up picture of that. Oh, we're gonna show it in setting. a second. Oh, good, okay. Yeah, so I had to, because this fabric collection is all about my hometown, of course, I had to do a piece blocks for my quilt seeds, too. And all my quilt seeds are always pieced blocks. They're not applique. And so here you can see all of the blocks. And um, when Teresa pieced these, she just pieced them exactly as Lori had them laid out. And then we'll be showing you in 2024 it all put together. We're not going to do it this year. We're going to wait until next year. And just kind of wanted to show you everything we have. We have the half yard bundles, fat quarter bundles, 10 inch squares, five inch squares, roly polies. We have all of it. Uh, like I said, the five inch and the 10 inch will be in stock on Tuesday. I did want to tell you though, that the calendar, I talked to Riley Blake yesterday and um, Lori's gonna, we're gonna flip back to Lori so she can show you her calendar. But it is, um, it's now, all that we have in stock is all we're going to have because they are now sold out of the calendar. So today's probably your last day you can get it at Fat Quarter Shop, but do you wanna show the calendar? Yeah, so you can, I don't know if you can see on my wall, but I always have my wall calendar that I've been doing for the last few years. But for this one, um, it's just every month is one of the blocks. Okay, so the blocks that I just showed you that were applicated that's what the calendar looks like. So I do have a lot of people um, that take this calendar and um, they use them in their paper crafting after the year is over. I, I do too. I'm a paper crafter, so I like to do that. But um, a lot of people have told me that they have um, framed that. And when I say a lot of people, the first time I said that is because my mom said she loves these calendars. And so she's like, I'm going to frame these. And so that's what she's done. So yeah, that's just the same, same blocks, a house for each one. Yeah, it's so pretty. Okay. Yeah, I wanna see all so of them. Those are the, the houses. Wall, January 1st. Those are the same blocks that she just showed you that were part of the sew along. Yeah. And there's, you know, there happens to be 12 houses. And so, of course, that, that works out perfectly, okay? And so this was just a calendar. It's not the pattern or anything, like I say, but it's just, um, it's really fun to have that hanging up in my sewing room to keep me straight. But I have been doing those specifically too. When I started doing those, my mom said, I need a wall calendar. And so, yeah. And Sharon Hutchison <laughs> is asking, what is a project you have planned for the hometown quilt labels? She just purchased two panels and wants to know how to use them. Oh, well, I have my labels here because I was going to show you what I was going to be putting on for my hometown quilt. Do you want me to show it to you? Yeah. Okay. So here's the panel. It's some of it. I can't, you know, show the whole thing, but um, <clears throat> Do you have a picture of that? Or, yeah, oh, I have wait, it right here. You can do, oh. uh, we can show my screen real quick and I can show you how it's really big. So that's one side. Yeah, it has a lot of labels in it. Yeah, and then this is the other side. And so they come with um, dotted lines right there, how you can see. And so see, this is what I've done right here. If I can bring that in closer. Oh yeah, that looks great. And, this is the label that I chose. And what I did was I just wrote, 
you know, the hometown so long and who it's made by in the year. But there's plenty of room that you could write anything that you want. So um, what you can do is what I'm going to be doing is cutting it out on the dashed lines here. And then I'll just press under and I'll applique it onto the back of my quilt after it's quilted. I used to do it before. And then I would worry about my quilter, you know, she would have to worry about getting it straight and things like that. But this way I just applique it on after and just hide my knots underneath the label. And so I just freehanded writing that on and I use a, this Pigma pen in a 05. That's what I always use, okay, for any fabric or anything like that. This won't bleed. And then you can embroider over it if you want to, um, or you can just leave it as a pen. But if you're worried about freehanding, you can just write what you want on a piece of paper and then put the put the label, you know, on a light box and write on there. So there's many ways to do it. You can put the label on before it's quilted or after, you know, whatever you want to do. So yeah, that's my labels, and I think they're kind of fun. Yeah, and they will so work. I'll with be doing any some other things with. I'll be doing some other things with my labels too. I have some ideas. I just haven't had time to execute them yet, but that's coming. So. Not just quilt labels, it'll be for something else as well. So, so do you want to show us anything else from your hometown collection that's on the board? Is there anything else you want to show us? Let's see, what do I have here? I don't think I have anything here right in front of me other than my blocks. Okay, you perfect. Know, and all that stuff that we just, oh wait, I do have my wide backs right here. Yes, and the wide backs will be back in stock soon. They sold out immediately. And they're so pretty. So, I used the pink one already. I knew you'd love the pink one best, Kimberly. Yes, yeah, so, sometimes when I see stuff like that, I think, I think Lori just designed that just for me, even though I know you really did it. Whenever I'm doing pink, though, I do often think of you, Kimberly, because <laughs> I'm like, I know she's going to like this one the best. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think that's all I have to show with hometown. Okay, so we have B dots. Let's talk about B dots and talk about how it's a basic and how you came up with it and all of that. Okay, so every once in a while I do a basic line. And so whenever I have basics that I put the word B in front of them. Wait, this camera is backwards. Okay. <laughs> and so I put the word B in front of my basics. And so that's how you know they're basics. So, you know, I have B cross stitch, B plaids, B ginghams, B, you know, I have a whole bunch of basics. And what basics mean are they're always available meaning they're evergreen. They're just, it's not a designer collection that just comes in and once it's sold out, it's gone, you know, that kind of thing. And so I love to be able to design with those knowing that I can get them. And then I make them my basics into one huge collection, if that makes sense, meaning each basic has its own collection, but yet if you put all of the basics together, they coordinate. And so you can make many, many things out of different basics. You could use pieces from all of them, or you can just take two or three and um, put them together. Like you could put, um, if you wanted something with ginghams and dots and things like that, you could use my B ginghams and my B dots. So, you know, that's, that's where the basics comes from. The rest of my collections are designer collections. So, and I use, you know, usually do a so simple shape so long and many other patterns with them. So, so this one, I did the Quilted Witch with this one, with the pattern with you guys. Yeah, and I'm going to show in a minute, I'm going to show the quilt again in a little bit. I was able to make it, so that was super exciting. I know. I loved watching you make that. So do you want to show anything from the board before I show the fabrics? Well, so when we have the board, you know, we just have all the fabrics in here and we have... So that's how stores buy fabric, guys. Um, when she was showing that, that's how um, sales reps come and show us the fabric. And then each of them have a skew and they have a barcode. So that's how uh, stores buy her fabrics. So on, I just opened this up and on seven and eight, there's my heart paper on there. Oh, and I made some heart blocks so, so I can show you real quick. I know. So I brought my blocks when I was showing Kimberly how to make these. We did a FaceTime video and I was showing her how easy it was to make these. So this is what the paper looks like. It's not paper piecing, it's freezer paper that's already printed on. And then, um, you know, Kimberly, you've done a tutorial and I've done a tutorial on my crazy quilt paper. And this is the same thing, it's just hearts. And so what you do is it forms, I haven't trimmed these up yet, but see they're kind of wonky on the outside because of the angles. 
You just iron it onto your 10 inch squares, cut on the lines and sew back together. This is two halves before I've sewn it together. And then I'm just gonna use my seven and a half inch trim it ruler and trim them up square so that I can sew them together. Okay, I wanna see your blocks. Kimberly. Okay, so here's my blocks. So when you make it, uh, you, make, oh, cute. you make two at a time. And so mm -hmm. I will be doing a tutorial on the Fat Quarter Shop YouTube channel in January. And all the information I'm going to give you on that video is straight from Lori. Um, so they're meant to be wonky, which is like, they're so cute though. So you can see like at the top, sometimes they meet up, sometimes they don't. But I could not stop making them. It only took me an hour to make all of these blocks. So, yeah, it's um, super fast. And it's super fun because you don't have to yeah. be exact. And you, you just know? put her, like she said, you know, when the block is bigger, you just put her ruler on there and decide where to cut. And what I did was I just used this center line and I'll talk about it in January. And then that's how I decided to cut. And they, you know, some of them are yeah. taller. Some of the hearts, you know, go up here. Some are shorter, but they all come out the same size. So it's going to be so cute when it's done. And the free pattern will be, is on Riley Blake Designs under B dots. But you do have to have it also, the paper. It also comes in the package. It comes in the package of the paper too, I think. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know. I don't Let think it does. Up. Let me see. The instructions come, but I don't think the, I don't think the pattern does. Oh wait, yes it well, does. It just, yes it does. I'm like, yeah you do. It's right yeah, there. Yeah you do. This is what it looks like. Yeah. And you just sew the blocks together and it just tells you the border measurements. And, you know, they're very simple patterns. This, these quilts are, you know, meant to be very simple and fast and just freeing and you don't have to be exact and they're just fun. And when she's... And they're great for beginners if you want to teach your kids how to sew. This is really fun for them. Yeah. And right here is the wax paper. What did you call it? Freezer it's paper. It's like freezer paper. So then yeah. you just put this on your layer cake and you just cut and all the instructions are here. And so we're going to be doing a sew along with B dots. So I'm going to use, you only need one B dot layer cake, but I'm starting with two. And we're going to be having this Paper Hearts B-Dot quilt sew along in January. Yeah, and they're fun because I they come in 10-inch squares so that you can press them right onto your 10-inch square. So you can either use pre-cuts. Okay, do you want to show anything else from your board? before I show all the fabric nope. in the quilt? No, because I, I want you to show the fabric in the quilt okay. because you have it there because you've got the quilt there, so. So this is the B-Dot as a collection. So this is all of the SKUs from darkest to lightest. And of course we have the fat quarter bundles, half yard bundles. We also have one yard bundles available. So it comes a million ways. And then at Fat Quarter Shop, we always cut background bundles, half yards and fat quarters because I feel like this is what sells the best. And um, then we obviously have all the other pre-cuts and I'm gonna show you the Quilted Witch, the actual quilt. I can't wait to see this again. I love, I love this quilt. <laughs> oh, and then we have the, the charms and the uh, thread cutter. This is so cute. If you put it on your sewing machine, it's really cute. You'll have to show how, I think you showed it on your channel already. I did in my in my video, I think one or two videos ago or something, I showed it. I put it on my featherweight on the end. <laughs> yeah, okay. So we're going to lay it down. Oh, that's beautiful. And the quilting's beautiful too. Yeah, so Maggie Honeyman did the quilting and the quilt kit... Um, so we sell it as a pattern, paper or PDF, and the kit does not come with the Rick Rack, but we have plenty of the large vintage trim and pumpkin available separately. And the 108, we put a different 108 on there just because we didn't have your 108s yet. Yeah, that didn't come in yet. That one's for my prim collection and I thought it went perfectly with yeah. that, so. And it's all pieced. And I, w I made it all in one weekend. So it is. I know. I remember when you were making it and you were sending me pictures. Look what I got done. Now I just finished this one. Now that looks good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then I can show you the cross stitch also. 
So on the Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube channel, we are doing uh, Stitchtober together, and I have stitched all, just the, the top part. So this weekend, I'm hoping to get at least half of the dress done. And this is a cross-stitch pattern by Lori Holt. I have my autumn love one that we that I did last year, Stitchtober, sitting right here. I brought it in if you want to see my autumn love. Yeah, so let's let's show you that. That's what it looks like all framed. So pretty. And we have it. We also have that here. So it's, it's, I can look at yours and mine at the same time. So cute. Okay. So the, the Quilted Witch finishes at 76 by 89, and we have a lot of people, because the, the Quilt Along just started, we have so many people asking about it. All the information is on the Jolly Jabber blog, um, so you'll want to go there um, to see that. Um, we talked about the Bee Hearts. That quilt finishes at 70 by 70. Um, I wanted to tell you something about the Quilted Witch, too, when I designed that. I just pictured her flying across um, the sky in on her broom, and she's like has her magic her magic wand, which is a needle, and she's like changing all the stars in the sky into quilt blocks. Aww. So that's kind of was my inspiration for that. That's cute. Okay, so we also have the uh, B dot simple vintage B vintage so simple shapes. Do you want to talk about these and how they oh, yeah. work okay. with the free? Oh, sorry, my tea with your free patterns that are at uh, Riley Blake. Yeah, in fact, I have my quilt. Let me grab that, hang on. I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to show you of this because, you know, my arms are only so large. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I want a quilt with just the doggy on it. Yeah, and so, you know, I've been designing a lot of quilts, which, so here's the sampler, what we did for the sew along. So I'm just gonna show you like, um, Oh, on my side, it looks right side up, but it's folded. Okay, I'm gonna show you like a quarter of the quilt at a time if I can. So pretty. And so this is all applique using your B Vintage So Simple Shapes. Yeah, of course, you know, piecing it together you have to, but um, anyway, so I've been designing lots of different quilts when you're just using just the same block over and over again. And so I do have one that's the Scotty Dogs design so far. I don't know. I think I've done like, I know that there's, isn't there four or is there six in the B dots that I did? Let me look in the storyboard. Yeah, there's the strawberry one and the vintage applique and the vintage flower baskets and the teapots. Okay, show there. them in the storyboard real quick. Okay, so there's the teapot one. So we just talk about what fabric I used for that one and, you know, what the yardage required is. And so that this is what I'm talking about. And then you can see three of them here, the flower basket and the strawberries and the applique. And so, and this applique one, I did it with the B dots in the pinks, pinks and the raisins and stuff like that to have my granddaughter really loved that color combination. But you can literally do any color combination that you want. And you can, I haven't drawn one up just out of cherries. So here's like the cherry block. But what I'm saying when I say draw one up, it's all the same setting. All those quilts that I just showed you are the exact same setting. I just switched out the fabrics. That's it. And then I just did the same block over and over again. And so in that set of So Simple Shapes, you get, you know, all of the patterns for all of these applique blocks and so really the possibilities are endless and the my inspiration for designing this was from all of the applique blocks that my grandma did and my great aunts and stuff like that we always had baby quilts and and um, birthday quilts and things like that going on the quilt frames and often the blocks were like this just very you know traditional vintage they weren't vintage then but they're vintage now so cute. So that's, I don't know, I hope I did a good enough job kind of showing you. <laughs> yeah, it looks great and I love that border. Let me see if I can pull some up from the bottom. Well, I did. 
Oh, here's here's overall Bill. That's Sunbonnet Sue's boyfriend. He's just been fishing. <laughs> so anyway. Okay. Okay, so you have a so that was B dots. Now in December, which oh my gosh, I feel like it's gonna be here before we know it, mercantile is gonna be coming. So do you wanna talk okay. about that collection, yes. there's so many things with that collection. Okay, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to show the story yeah, board show or the do you want board. to? And then we can talk about okay. each of the items. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stand up so I can show you this. So this is what the storyboard looks like. That and here's the fabrics, and I actually have pre yardage of fabric that I can show you. This is what the wide backs, which are not here yet, you know, the wide backs always take longer, but this is what the wide backs look like. It's kind of like a um, vintage sheets or cross stitch looking print. But um, mercantile or mercantile, however you want to pronounce it, depending on where you live in the country, is after um, designed, inspired by my grandma, who um, owned the local mercantile in our town. And so that was really fun. And so I just did prints that I thought would be great and um, would kind of go with that nostalgic feel. And the sew along quilt right here is, is all pieced. All of the blocks are pieced except for you applique the circles. Okay, so then after we piece the blocks, which I'll be doing on my YouTube channel, then um, the tutorials for each of the blocks, then we just turn them into a circle and applique that onto the background. So there's a little bit of applique in here, but everything else is pieced, including the border and everything like that. And so for those of you who maybe never done my method before, this might be a really great one to start out with. And, and if, Kimberly's doing it. Yeah, and it finishes <laughs> at 88 by 88. Yes. And so that's so, so long will start quilt. at the very end of January 2024. Yeah, so I'll do like a be prepared post on my blog, like I always do at the first of the month, right after the first of the year. And so I talk about all the notions, show pictures of everything, just so everybody is kind of on board. And then that's when you can download the sew along guide, which gives you cutting. And you're going to use your 12 so, inch circle ruler to do the, to do the yes. applique, right? Yeah. And that 12 inch circle ruler has been out on the market for quite a while. So, um, you know, if you don't have one, you can grab one for that. But if you've, you've if you've used it in the past for other sew alongs, then that's great. You've already got it. So. Okay, okay, so then here's the kit quilts. Do you want me to talk about those? Yeah, and then he Jordan can pop up images too at the same time to make it easier. Okay. There you go. All right, so there's the heritage table topper, and I always design uh, two kit quilts that this one uses five inch squares and five inch stackers, and so this is a cute little table topper. And it's 43 inches and square. Everything comes in the kit, including the pattern. That's where you get the pattern is in the kit. Yep. So... So that's the heritage table topper out of the five inch squares. And then the next one is the um, penny candy. Of course, I had to do penny candy because, you know, we are talking about mercantile here, right? And so that is done with my new ruler, which, well, first you piece all the blocks and then again, you turn these into a circle. And I did a seven inch circle ruler for this. And so everything's pieced just like the sew along quilt, though you you turn it into a circle at the end and then twist the blocks. So see, instead of a cross, now it becomes an X because you can twist those blocks and it looks really super hard to piece and it's not, it's really fast and easy. And that one's 60 inches square and both of the kits she just showed you come pre in a box by Riley Blake. So they're like a collectible box, really cute. Yeah. The next one and you're then, gonna show, we don't have an image, it's Spring Bouquet's quilt pattern. Oh, okay. Oh. Let me turn back to that. This is um, using a set of rulers for this bouquet block. This is a vintage bouquet block that is often very hard to piece because of all the different angles. But I really wanted to do this because this is one of my grandma's favorite blocks. And so um, I'm trying to turn this so there's not a glare. Is that better? Okay. And so I'm doing a set of rulers that should be coming out soon. 
and um, so that you can piece them. So you just rotary cut with the rulers and you just simply piece them together. And of course, it, there's a pattern and you know that tells you how to do that. And so I'm excited about this. This should be should be coming soon. So and that one's layer cake friendly. Yeah, you can use a you can use ten inch squares or you can you know just use yardage or scraps. That's a, you know me and my scrap quilts. I love scrap quilts. So um, you know that's one of the things that I love about that block is because it can be totally scrappy or you could do all the blocks exactly the same or whatever you wanted to do. So. Okay. All right, we're gonna talk about this one next. Kimberly, yeah, there it is, Millie's Dresses. And this is a pattern that I'm doing with it, so Emma. And so I did this pattern I've had this pattern around for a lot of years. My grandma's name is Mildred. We all called her Millie. Of course, I called her grandma. But um, so these are the dresses that looked like the dresses that she always wore, her and her sisters and things like that. And so I redid this pattern in um, a smaller size and a different size quilt and wanted to, you know, ask Kimberly, can I do this pattern with you guys? And she said, of course. And so I just really wanted to use these prints that look like dresses. When I was designing these prints, that's kind of what I had in mind is, you know, is this a print that you could, that you would go back in the day into the mercantile and purchase yardage of? And so my grandma always had four yards of everything. And so when I was going through her trunk, when she would let me use some of her fabric for sewing, I'm like, Grandma, why is there always four yards of everything? And she said, because that's how much it took, takes to make a dress. So I always bought four yards. And then she would use the leftovers for her quilts and things like that. So, but I had pre-yardage. Oh, of, yeah, let's um, show it. And that quilt finishes yeah. at 58 by 70. And um, Priscilla would like to know, are there so simple shapes for mercantile? No, because no. all the blocks are pieced. Right. Okay. So there's no so simple shapes for it's the only thing that you need for the applique is the 12 inch circle ruler. That's it. Okay. So this is like the first time anybody has seen real yardage of mercantile. So this is so exciting. So I kind of have it broken up into color families. So here's the greens and you can see this cute little quilt block that I've got on the salvage. And so here's the, here's the greens. I'll just hold these up. I don't know. Can you see that? Yes. It looks so good. So I've got some that are saturated and some that have a lot of background fabric. Uh, sorry, background color in them. So they're a little bit like a medium tone. I'm hoping because of my lighting is, you know, not not good like it is there that you can see these prints. Yeah, it looks great. And so this is how, just so you guys know, this is how Lori gets her yardage. And then all of this eventually will be cut up into quilts and you'll see it on her blog and her YouTube and you can be inspired. But this fabric will make so many beautiful things. So it's, this is like so when the I, beginning of. Yes. So when it's almost ready to, you know, when I've approved all of the SKUs and everything, we've done all the strike offs, then, um, I'm going into the yellows, by the way, which obviously you can see that. Um, then I get three yards of each. Riley Blake sends me three yards of each so that I can start sewing and things like that with it. But um, then once the whole collect, once the whole collection comes out, they I get a bolt of each fabric for my collection. Okay, so now we're going to go into the pinks and the reds. And this will be coming in December, guys. So. You're getting to see it in advance. And we're going to have a lot of sew alongs with this. Like the Millie's Garden is going to have a sew along. I'm going to follow along with your mercantile quilt along. Yep. And we also have a Jolly Bar for mercantile. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm excited about that. I always like when you guys do Jolly Bars with my fabrics. Oh, that Am I so taking pretty. too long to show these? Prints? No, I love it. I love that as a backing and a border. And I'm I, getting buried deep in them pretty soon. You're not going to be able to see me. I'm going to be. I know. All buried in fabrics. And I love <laughs> because Lori's lines always have a lot of 
a lot of SKUs. And so I love that because it gives you so many more options to make so many more things within your quilts. Well, that's just the look of my, my quilts, you know, so my quilts typically don't take, um, you know, like, I don't want to say just, you know, like three or four skews. You can do that, but just the quilts that I happen to design, I'm just a scrappy, scrappy um, sewer at heart, you know? And so these are my tea dyes here. You always need neutrals to go into your vintage quilts like this. And so I'm always doing colors like tea dye and pebble and cider and things like this. This is a really little fun one. It's got little roses on it. That's very soft. So how long would really it, am getting buried. How long does it take you to design a fabric line? Well, that's kind of a hard question to answer because Oh my gosh, I okay, keep, know... you're going to be totally covered. Keep doing it. It's going to be so funny. Okay. okay. Keep doing it. As long as you can see the fabrics. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I didn't obviously think this out when I pulled these out here <laughs> of where I was going to put them after. I just have these sitting on my little bench. But anyway, so I know what I'm doing like several years, months ahead of what I'm doing. And so I'll start, you know, I'll start drawing and designing. And when I, you know, have an idea for something, then I'll like, okay, you know, I'll put it in this folder. And my, you know, I hand draw everything. I'm not a graphic artist at all. So I'll, you know, my ideas, my blocks and things like that. And so, I hope this doesn't fall over on me. There. I don't think it will. Your table's pretty sturdy. <laughs> yes, it's my great big counter table that y'all see in my videos. And of course, Kimberly, you've been here. So, like you could throw a mattress on it, I guess, and sleep on it because it's super sturdy and it's big. Yeah. Okay, so, I'm still going. So, there's 40, 42 skews which is perfect because then when you get the pre-cuts, you get one of each. Can you still see me yet? A little bit. I can't see you. But see how awesome all the color <laughs> shades are and like how, you know, you're not just getting three reds. You're getting different shades of greens. And so that's how you're yes, able to do, do different... all the beautiful quilts. Thank you. And that's what I do. I do greens. I do mints. I do aquas. I do blues, denims. Okay, here I am peeking up over, but I'm not done yet. <laughs> okay. There's that one. Just tell me if I'm getting too tall. No, I just don't. See. No, no, no. We can see. I just don't want, <laughs> want it to fall over on you. Oh, it's not going to fall over. <laughs> Just a second, I had to drink my tea. <laughs> okay, so here's that one. That one's really pretty. I have a few lighter ones. And you always need, when you're doing scrap quilts and things like this, and, and um, you need to have a lot with, I wouldn't call these low volume because they're pretty busy, but they have background behind them. It's kind of like a medium. I call them mediums. Okay, can you still see or do yeah. I have to move these? Yeah, I can see. Because I have, have a few more. Okay, so I did four backgrounds with this collection. So here's the first one. There's the second one. Yes, there's a yellow, green, red, oh, let's see, denim, coral, lettuce, and latte. And we're going to be selling that in fat quarter, half yard, and one yard bundles because people love those. So here's the coral ones. Yeah, and they're each, four, there's one each design, and they're all different. All four are in a different color. So there's four designs and four colors. Okay, so that's the backgrounds, but I think I better unstack some of this or you're not going to be able to see. Okay, Jordan says yes on stacks. <laughs> okay, hang on. Because I have two more prints to show you. Okay. How's that? Can you see? Okay. Yes. All right. So I have two of my decorator weight prints. So can we talk about my decorator weight prints? Oh, for a yes. And I did want to mention your labels that you showed earlier. 
Um, those are decorator weight, and I do yes. see questions oh, yeah. on those, and we are going to get to those, but we're going to get to those towards the end. So as y'all just keep asking questions, we are definitely going to answer all of them. I'm seeing them. Okay. I see you. I want to show this right side up and fold this. So this is home deck fabric for decorator weight. And the best way I can describe it is, well, it comes wider, number one, but it's also, um, I'm going to try to hold this still. It's also kind of like a lightweight canvas, but, but it's soft. You know, sometimes canvas, you think, oh, that's hard. You know, that's a stiff fabric, but it's not. It's soft. You can put this in your quilt uh -huh. if you want. It's not that thick. I mean, Kimberly, you've worked with it before, so you know. Right. It, I use this. Yeah, it works great for backings, too. It's not too stiff. You know, yes. 20 years ago, the fabric has gone, has come such a long way since we've been in business, and it's really soft. It'd make great it's pillows, It's really good too. quality. Yeah. yeah. So I call it home, you know, deck weight because you can make pillows. You can make pillowcases. You can cover furniture with it. You know, it's just cotton, but it's just a little bit thicker. But it's nice because this weight, I, I like to do like project bags with and, you know, a lot of different kind of bags is perfect for any kind of bags, like tote bags or storage bags or things like that. But I love to make pillowcases out of mine. But you could also make a quilt too. So speaking of that, I'll show you this next one. So this this is the good advice. I never told you what this is. This is like advice that you would that I would get from my grandma and my aunts, you know, sitting around the quilting train growing up. And so that's what this panel is. And I just think that's really gonna be fun to do some fun things with. But I always like to do like a cheater print because it just kind of looks like this one, for instance, looks like you could have English paper paint paper pieced it you know but you can just get two widths of this fabric and match it up like wallpaper and sew it and quilt this quilt and put it on your bed or you know for you could just use it for a crib quilt or anything like that and both but, of those are 58 inches wide yes and so you could just you could buy yardage so that you can make a square one or just you know, buy it so because it's 58 wide, you could make it, you know, buy it so that it's uh, two yards, so that it's 58 by 72. You could tie the quilt. Remember tying quilts? <laughs> that would be really fun. Tie that with my chunky, chunky thread yarn. That'd be fun. So that's what the home deck is. So sometimes, you know, usually I'll have some, some home deck with it, but like Kimberly said, you can use it for backing or whatever. Now I have to unbury myself out of all this fabric. Yeah, and Chris, Christopher Thompson says hi. Good morning, Lori. Oh, Christopher, hi. Okay. That's like 50 pounds right there. Three yards of stuff I just can't wait to cut into and get started. So, hey, I'm excited about that. So, I'm going to show now the quilt seed patterns for Mercantile. Oh, okay. So, this is... Uh, these are individual quilt seed patterns. There will be six individual ones. We will sell them as individual patterns, as a pack of patterns, individual kits, and a finishing kit. And I love these because they are, this is a great quilt for your sewing room. So I'm thinking of making it and hanging it up in my sewing room. So when I designed this one, I each block already has that little border. scalloped border that I often do in my quilts. I've been doing that for, for years and years. That's kind of like my little signature scallop border that I do quite a bit. And um, so I wanted to put that around each block within the kits and the pattern. And so all you do is sew them together and then you just add the outside. Um, bordered however big or large you want to make that so that's just a suggestion and but I think it would be really fun to make these individually too yes and you could hang them like wide across your wall or up and down or however you wanted to you know fit those in your sewing room or um, I don't know I just there's a lot of piecing and these are all pieced no applique again my quilt seeds are all pieced but there's a lot of piecing within each block, but I just thought these were really fun. I just really wanted to talk about um, sewing and 
in these blocks. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there's quilt blocks in each. In each of those blocks, there's a quilt block in there. Yeah, so. and they're, they're, so they're 25 by 29 for each individual block. And if you turn it into the quilt, it's 71 by 88. So I'm envisioning mini quilts, quilts on the wall of your sewing room or the couch of your sewing room. I love it. I'm going to, that's definitely on my list. You could even just do one as a sewing mat under your machine or, you know, oh, I just yeah. think they're really versatile. You could just use them for a lot of different things in your sewing room. I like to switch things around in my sewing room and, you yes. know, maybe not hang things the exact same way they were. So I think they're going to be fun to work with. And then I want to show your Blackberry Jam quilt pattern. That is going to, the pattern is designed by Lori. It's only going to go in our Jolly Bar. And that is so cute. I think it uses two Jolly Bars and it makes a pretty big quilt. It's 56 by 64, super cute, love that design. I can't wait to sew that up, that's gonna be fun. That looks so vintage and fun and scrappy to me. And so. I love it because it's easy, you know, it's doable. You could probably get that done oh, in a yeah. weekend. Yeah. I did wanna show Millie's dresses and just, this is kind of the a draft of the pattern, just to show how good it looks. It really shows you, um, what you cut out of the dress and then what you cut out of the, you know, it's really detailed and I'm really proud of the pattern. So great. Those dresses are really fun to sew. Yes. They're just, they're, each one is really fun. And it makes it where if you weren't using Millie's dresses or if you weren't using Mercantile, you can see exactly what she planned. So if you need to replace some, you can. Yeah, you could switch them out with any of the other prints in my collections, too, because, yes. you know, it all goes together. So, ooh, now we're going to talk about autumn. Yep, so Mercantile <laughs> ships in December, autumn ships in April, and we even have one after. So April 2024. So um, there's a lot in this one, guys. I'm going to let Lori show it all to you. Oh, okay. All right, so this is autumn, and this is kind of my my inspiration was from my first autumn collection which was called autumn love but i didn't want to call it just autumn love or autumn love too because i used all of the prints in autumn love but i recolored them some i rescaled but i added a lot more prints to it and so i just decided to just drop the word love even though i still love this and just call it autumn so that we didn't get confused with the two collections and so um this is how to build a scarecrow and so in the center of this quilt you can see this is all from so simple shapes everything in here is applique in my so simple shapes and then all of the blocks around the outside are pieced okay so i'll be doing a sew along with that and it always tells um tells in the guide like when the sew along starts so the quilt shops know when the sew along starts so they Neat, you know, so they can get prepared for that, but it shows all of the prints. So if you have had Autumn Love that I did several years ago, you will recognize some of these prints and then you will recognize So, okay, go back to well. that page and show the 108s and the background. So the top oh, right okay. is backgrounds. Okay, there's kind of a glare. And is then the bottom okay. five are 108s. Yeah, and... so these are all backgrounds. I have 10 different. Oh yeah, they're um, on the bottom in the middle. The other yeah, five. there's the bottom right there over here. Yeah. And then at the top and then I have six wide backs and that's what these are right here. And just so everyone so, knows the storyboards that Lori is showing, if you go to RileyBlakeDesigns.com and the very top on their menu bar, it says storyboards and you can find these, click on them and you have access to everything she's showing you right here. Yeah, you can see everything close up. You can see the skew numbers. So here is my decorator weight print for that. I did this in the like the traditional apple core. So what it shows you on the storyboard is actual size, actual scale of the print, but then it shows you smaller, like so you can see the repeat of it. So that's what that is on the storyboard. And then the next page is, whoops, I just covered up the wrong one. The next page is my kits that I talked to you about. Okay, so Jordan's going to pop up some images while you talk about it. Okay, them. good. That'll be easier because of the glare on here. But So that's my pumpkins and haystacks. And this is really fun because um, we this one comes in a box. This is 10-inch um, square friendly. 
but you can see that you piece the quilt and then the pumpkins are applique with so simple shapes and i designed a set uh, a new set of so simple shapes just to go into this kit and so there's only four shapes in the kit that makes the pumpkin so it's the allied pumpkin the middle of the leaf. and so that comes in the kit and we we are putting the kit in a pumpkin box so that's what that one is and i'm excited about that fall quilt i have a lot of fall quilts in here going on <laughs> and that's my autumn skies i'm okay, definitely so making this, is, this one um, uh this is the one this is just all traditionally pieced and this is from the five inch squares so and often when I can't decide what, what, which fabric that I want on the border, I'm like, oh, the green looks good. Oh, the pink looks good. I'm like, okay, let's just put all four. So I have all four. And I, if, if you guys have followed my patterns and stuff, you see that I do that every once in a while. I'll just do a scrappy border as well, just by doing four different colors. Okay, so um, the How to Build a Scarecrow, the size of that, is 74 by 87 and again the center is applique and the outside are pieced you could just do those piece blocks and put them into a quilt too and you could do a smaller quilt if you wanted to with just the applique by just putting a fabric border or no border on it but these are all the pieces to make a scarecrow and if i did draw them so that they are i don't know if you want to say you know they're the sizing is correct with each other so that you can actually make a scarecrow out of them, like an applique scarecrow, like you can put them all together and it's a scarecrow. And so I'm revealing this now. So the only thing that's missing is the head of the scarecrow. And I put that in the collection. There is an extra so simple shape in the collection for the face of the scarecrow. And so we'll be doing that during the sew along. And I'll be talking about that too, where there will be kind of like a secondary um, design design for this if you you know it's just optional it's just i'm just going to show you mine and what i did so i'm excited about that so i'm telling you how to build a scarecrow and then you can actually do one <laughs> and that's so along let me let me read my invitation so i don't get it wrong but that starts in may may 20th so i wanted to do that early enough that's why this collection comes out when it does is um which is in april so that we can sew this and have the sew along so that you can have it quilted and um in your homes in the fall okay what else do you want me to talk about in here kimberly let's keep okay, going let's, to the pattern so that was the applique now we have the quilted scarecrow that's published by it's so emma and i'm gonna definitely be sewing this one it's so cute uh, i can't wait to i can't wait for this one too so this one just like when i told you about the quilted witch you know, she was like flying around and changing all of the stars into quilt blocks. This one, I just imagined the scarecrow raking up the leaves. Okay. And so there's all different kinds of pieced fall leaves in different sizes and different styles. And then he's got a pumpkin on his milk can. And of course, the milk can has a painted quilt block on. I don't know if you remember those days at all, but you know, I did publish um, decorative painting books for 12 years. And one of the things we did was I would take milk cans um, and my grandma gave me some from my grandpa's barn and stuff and I would paint them and paint pictures on them. So that's kind of a throwback to that kind of nostalgia that way. And so he's got his red rake there and he's got his gar garden gloves on and he's not very scary because he's got a crow sitting right on his arm. So <laughs> that's the quilt of scarecrow. And that will have a quilt quilts along also, and more details will come uh, closer to the fabric delivery day. Yeah, and that, I don't remember you said the size, but that's 80 by 85. Yes. And so I think this is perfect to put on your wall, but also over your sofa to snuggle up in. But I think that it would be so fun that him just laying on a, like on a twin bed. <laughs> So and there uh, will I be think a my, grand, my grandson might be getting this for his bed by the time I, you know. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> and Wouldn't this will be, be a cross stitch yeah. too. More information to come later. Yes. Okay. I didn't know if you wanted to say that or not, Kimberly. But yes, there's going to be a cross stitch. <laughs> well, I know people are going to ask, so better answer it before. Okay. 
Well, I mean, they might, they may assume that because, you know, I did the quilted witch and then in a quilt and then a cross stitch. So, and this is the quilted scarecrow. So yes, cross stitch as well. And so then the next one, the, the next pattern that I'm doing with you guys is crows in the corn. And I love like courthouse step or log cabin blocks all the time. And that just means fall to me a lot. And I just wanted to draw up another crow block. I have several crows that I have drawn up in the past and um, because I love them. But so this quilt, it's like um, the cornfield, I guess you wanna say the log cabin blocks or the courthouse step blocks are a cornfield with the star in the middle there and the crows are kind of circling <laughs> to go into that cornfield and that's where the star is kind of x marks the spot where the corn is right so this is kind of those blocks are kind of like a bird's eye view <laughs> and that's my inspiration from that and i think that's going to be a really fun fall quilt and yes everything's pieced no applique so everybody always asks that when they see a quilt now um I typically do all of my, um, anything I do with you guys with it, so Emma is all pieced, right? I don't think right. I've ever done any applique right. with you. And this so. one's 69 by 77, and I really like the rectangular courthouse step. That would make a really cute pillowcase. Or yeah, sham, I just extended I that out. Sham. Yeah, yeah, I just extended that size out, so it's, I just added a strip on the side so it's not square, but I think it's really fun. Okay, so. the next one we're going to have you show, it's the pumpkin paper quilt. Oh, okay. So now we just talked about the hearts. So now this is pumpkin. So it's just going to be the same thing. It's just pumpkin paper. And this one, instead of the seven and a half inch trim, oh no, this is the seven and a half inch trim as well. So my crazy paper uses the eight and a half inch trim, my first one. The heart one uses the seven and a half, and this one uses the seven and a half because of all the different angles. And these are really fun because this these make wonky blocks like we've said before but this is fun because they're just kind of wonky pumpkins so this is what it looks like the top one in the collection in autumn and you just use you know 10 inch squares for that and then add a border and some sashing in between the rows and then down here you could just choose your colors of fabric so i've colored them in different basics and different things from autumn as well to just do like the golds and the oranges and the reds and the browns. And definitely show your charms on the next page. That bottom right one is oh, okay. so I'll hold cute. That Which one? Oh, you're talking the about jar. The, the jar. So I drew this jar um, quite a while ago when I did my Be Happy quilt. And I put the word B across there instead of, you know, how you get the ball jars. And so I decided to make it into a charm for fall because it's canning season in the fall, right? And then I did an apple and my sunflowers. And then up here, the scarecrow is that, I was pointing back. Oh yeah, if that's- The scarecrow, yeah. yeah, that's a scissor minder. I mean, it can be a needle minder and a scissor minder, but I always do these larger to go on my design boards. And so you just put the magnet on the back of the design board, stick these on the design boards. And that's what I keep all my threads and things like when I'm cross stitching and um or binding a quilt or anything like that i use my design boards for everything so anyway isn't he cute he's tall this is what it looks like when you put the pieces together on the how to build a scarecrow quilt this is what he looks like so cute so and what i'm most excited then, about is on that back page oh the back page oh yes very very okay. exciting so here's here's my calendar and so this is called the sew and stitch binder calendar and what it is is just a calendar it has like monthly calendars um you know by the month and then it has weekly that you can write on so daily and it's hard to see here because but if if you want to go onto the website you can see these close up but so there's plenty of room to write down you know your sew alongs and things like that that's why i did this calendar i've had so many requests over several years to do a calendar that fits in my binder that you can, you know, write about all of your projects, keep track of my sew alongs, uh, when my patterns are coming out, my fabric collections, because, you know, I know I have a lot going on and it can be hard to remember everything. And actually this is, um, this is kind of a system I use. And so this is what I put into my calendar. And then you can, so the calendar comes with dividers and so that you can, 
adjust, meaning it comes from January through December. Um, what do I want to say? Like these folders are already labeled January through December. And then there's three that are labeled for quilting and for cross stitch and for crochet or knitting or punch needle or whatever you're doing with yarn. And so those three supplements are sold separately because you might not do all three or you might only quilt or you might, you know, just knit or whatever, or just cross stitch. So this is perfect that you can buy those separately and they're each project pages with plenty of room for your layout and all the information that you need. And then with these um, binders right here, these little tab dividers, page dividers, you can, you know, put those in between. You can, there's three of these, three of these come extra so that you can label them yourselves so that you can, you know, put things in like for your home decor, your holidays, your Christmas shopping, your whatever you want to do, your, your groceries, your, your, home things, you know, home repair, a lot of things that people use calendars and planners and lists for. And so they already come just kind of shrunk wrapped in um, with the three hole punch. So they'll fit in any of my binders. And those so, are going to be coming in the next two or three weeks. So that's going to yes. be exciting because that will come before 2024. The collection's not coming until April, but the paper products are coming soon. Yeah, we wanted them to come you know, in the fall so that you can, you know, get all ready and you can start filling out so long things already for next year. But we wanted to have, you know, have it ready for January 1st so that you could start your year off with your organization for your sewing things or everything actually to organize your whole life if you want to. <laughs> and then Autumn so, also- I'm a planner. Yes. I'm a planner person, she's, as you know. She's so. a planner, planner, planner. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, the autumn quilt seeds, the autumn collection also has quilt seeds and there are nine of them. So there will be nine individual patterns for these pumpkins, a finishing pattern, and we will sell individual block kits, finishing kit, individual patterns, pattern sets. The blocks are 18 by 20 and the finished quilt is 78 by 84. Do you want to talk about your inspiration for the autumn quilt seeds? Well, I decided to do um, nine for these because I wanted, I knew the quilt setting that I wanted. It's a quilt setting that I use quite a bit and it just sells, you know, says fall to me and with the checkerboards and the intersections and things like that. And, but I really wanted to do a dark background for the blocks and do ghost pumpkins. So I wanted to use the backgrounds that I designed for this collection, all the different ones, um, so I designed 10 backgrounds for this collection. So there's nine, each pumpkin has a different background. And then within the blocks, there's the 10th one. And so that they're ghost pumpkins, meaning they're white pumpkins on a background. And then you could um, pop those fun, colorful fall quilt blocks on the pumpkin. So which, you know, I've, I've done a lot of pumpkins over the years with quilt blocks inside of them. And so I just wanted to do a larger one and, um, so that you could really have fun piecing those blocks and see those prints. And so that was my inspiration for that. So autumn ships in April, and then we're gonna move to hometown holiday, which ships next July. So we're talking nine months Yeah, back out. to back. Yes. Yeah, we're talking when we're finished with the autumn. Let's see, so let me look at this real quick. So I told you when the sew along started for that. This sew along that I'm going to talk to you about here in a minute um, starts in August. And so we'll have a little bit of, of a break in between, but then we'll move on to this one. So this is my newest collection that has just being announced in the last week or so. And I am so excited about this. So this is my second Christmas collection that I've ever done. This is Hometown Holiday, and it's just kind of a spinoff. From hometown, the the ideas from hometown. When I say spin off, I I use one print from hometown, and recolored it and put it in here, which is. Let's see where is it on here. It's this one down here on the bottom. Right here. So oh, these two again backwards, <laughs> backwards camera. Okay, so that's the print from hometown, but it's just the nostalgia. The reason I called it hometown, it's the same kind of thing that I did with my hometown collection that's available right now. I just, these are my memories 
of growing up in my hometown and celebrating Christmas with my family and friends. And, you know, in our hometown, everybody knew everybody and we had Christmas celebrations together along with family and everything. And so this one is, this quilt is let's build a snowman. Okay, let's make a snowman is what it's called. And it's the same kind of premise, but you're doing a snowman instead of a scarecrow and you've got the blocks around the outside. And so I'm super excited about that. Okay. Can you see that okay without the yes. Do you have a picture of that one? We okay. do, but open it back up because you skipped over some things. Show okay, the tin back. Okay, okay so, you ask me. So do do the show okay. the backgrounds because this one also has tin. And then the church yes, this one has tin. The church print is a 45 inch. Yeah, it's not a home deck. And then the church print. The bottom, those seven point to the 108s right there. I have so many I have so many quilts. So the, down yeah, at the bottom, so the bottom those right. Six, those, and then you see the red. Those seven are one oh eights. Yeah, so I asked Riley Blake, can I do more wide backs? And you know, I, I love being a Riley Blake designer. They're like, Yes, you can. And so that's what I did. And so in each pattern that I have in here, you know, I, I do the suggested wide back of what I did the wide backs to match each quilt so so that you don't have to guess that doesn't mean you have to use that wide back for it but it's just my suggestion and what i designed it for and so you know it will coordinate and then here's all the prints in there and then the next page has your 58 inch wide home deck which is a and snowball. of course again like kimberly said you can look at this on the brighter blick website so you can see everything close up so here is the snowball Okay, and so that's home deck as well. And so this is the actual size right here. And then you can see the repeat down in the corner of what it looks like. But I will definitely be having this quilt on my bed for the winter time. I'll just be buying two lengths of fabric, sewing them together, matching them up like wallpaper so it looks seamless, and then just quilting it and binding it. No border or anything like that. And I think that's going to be really fun. Okay, so now we'll pop okay. up images. The Decorating the Tree Kit by Lori Holt is 80 by 86. Yes. I am super excited about this quilt. And these are, you know, this quilt is in, inspired by vintage ornaments, which I love and have and have many passed down from families. And these are like the ornaments that my grandma had on her tree and then my mom. And so I'm excited about this because it's coming in a box, which, you know, my kits always come in a box like this. This is the 10 inch stacker quilt right here. And so, um, so this is the 10 inch stacker. And so it comes in a box. Can you see right here? We'll see. Okay. So I just decorated this box and designed it to make it look like a gift box from Christmas. And then it's got dividers in there that pop up after. They'll just be in the bottom of the kit that you can pull up and put together after that fits ornaments. So it will fit nine ornaments inside of that box so that you can put them away because all my vintage ornaments, I wrap in tissue paper and put in divider boxes and things like, things like that when I put away to keep them nice and safe. So that's what that kit is inside this box, okay? The next one I'm definitely making, it's the Christmas Candy Runner Kit, and that looks totally like me. I can't wait to make that. Yeah, this is for the inch square. This is really fun. Of course, we had tradition of making Christmas candy and growing up, and so I had to do something for the table that, you know, represented the Christmas candy. What Did you say what that finish size was? Let me see. 27. It's 27 by 57. And show the box real quick. It's so cute how and the so, different sizes have different color, or the different sides have different colors. So I just started doing the different, you know how I've always had the square boxes for my uh, five inch stacker kits. I decided to go into a rec rectangle box size. And um, so I worked with Christopher on this and he's just like, yeah, I think that would fit in there. And I'm like, I just want a different shape box a little bit. So this was the rectangle. I think this is the same size box that like, if you do the the bench pillow or the um, table runner kits or whatever through Riley Blake, it's the same size box 
but I do I put an actual design on the box itself. So that'll be fun for storage. All those boxes are really fun. Okay. And then the next page, it just talks about the snowman quilt again, the sew along. And again, there's a set of so simple shapes called Let's Make a Snowman that go inside of the quilt there. And there is some piecing inside besides the border pieces that tree is pieced. And then for the snowman bodies themselves, I've used all of my 10 backgrounds and made very um, simple scrappy piecing. And then we cut, you know, make them into the shape, the ovals into the body. And so that's really fun. And so this is just kind of a winter quilt. I love snowmen and I decorate, I keep them out after Christmas until I bring out my Valentine stuff. So, you know, I, I do live in a, in a snowy state, a state that we're known for our snow and uh, for skiing. And so I keep my snowmen out all winter long and I've always loved snowmen. I think they're bright and they're happy. So that's that one. And that one starts again in August. So we can have that finished for Christmas. Okay, now let's talk about the quilted snowman. And so this is a pattern through It's So Emma, and this is all pieced, no applique on this. And so this snowman, instead of a sled, he's riding in his little red wagon amongst the trees and amongst the quilted snowflakes that look like stars, okay? Stars and snowflakes together in the sky. And his body is pieced with all of the backgrounds together. So he's he's quilted. He's the quilted snowman, so he had to be quilted, right? And so I'm excited about this. And it's 80, and, 87 by 97, and there will be a quilt along, but we're gonna announce dates closer to the fabric release dates. Yes, one, and also, um, yes, there will be a cross stitch for this one as well. Okay, so then the hometown holiday sampler. As you know, I love to cross stitch, so I wanted to do the traditional cross stitch alphabet. So basically this looks like a big, a quilt sampler is what I wanted it to look like. So with the house and the trees and the stars and things like that, I think this is really going to be fun to, I did all of the red, or, the red letters in different reds throughout the collection so that it would kind of look like um, the overdyed floss, the variegated floss with different reds showing through and uh, I put quilt blocks in between, separated by uh, rows of stitches and a little holly. And I just love this. I am excited about this. I'm going to hang this quilt when I make this, hang it on the wall above my bed at Christmas time. And it will have a cross stitch also. Yes, this will definitely have a cross stitch. And did you say, let's see what this finished. This is 93 by 98, so it's a big quilt. And if you want it bigger, I had a lot of people say, I, I want quilts like this bigger. Well, just put a wider border on this one. This is a perfect one if you want it for your king size bed or queen to have a larger drop for mm -hmm. the bed, then just put a wider border on it. So, yeah. The next quilt is called Christmas Pie, and that is using your pie ruler. Yes. I wanted to do a couple of quilts here to use my rulers that I've done in other sew alongs. And so I've used my pie ruler for several different sew alongs. I love a Dresden quilt. And so I just decided to drop a setting for this using this collection and it's called Christmas pie. And then the next one right here is I did this originally, this quilt design for my cookbook collection and it was called Putluck, Potluck Stars and it was in a kit and now it will become a pattern. And so that can be, I call this Holiday Stars because um, I just think, well, it's hometown, not holiday, hometown stars, because it doesn't have to be for Christmas. It could be for anything, you know, just depending on the fabric that you used. But this uses my triangle rulers. And right it uses here. your 10 inch stackers and it's 65 yep. inches square. And that yep. one used the double triangle ruler, which is different than the pie ruler. Right, yeah, two separate rulers. So, and then on the back cover we have, 
those trees. Now these are trees. So the same, you know, freezer paper, same packaging, just different pattern. And so that's to make the trees. And every that's time that fun. you have some of the paper products, you always show it in a multicolor and then two-toned, which is really awesome because it gives people um, different options. Exactly. There's different, there's a lot of different options with those. You can just use your scraps and how many people have 10 inch squares left over from, you know, their, from their, from their pre-cuts that they haven't used all of them. Yeah. You know, you could use those and just make it totally scrappy. Yeah. Okay. So that's all in that of the fabric, but did you want me to talk about the notions or do you want to show the quilt seeds or? Let's show the notions first and then we'll do the quilt seeds. Okay. All right, so we've got, oh, I've got a Christmas ornament coming out. This is my first one right here, and I'm excited about that. It's a little vintage sewing machine. And I've got my scissor, scissor minder or needle minder, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it's in the snowman. I love the and gift I've got labels. My washi. Okay, so I'm excited about these. So these are come on a roll like washi tape does, but they're four inches wide, and it actually has the um you can remove the tape the sticker tape from the back does that make sense yes. so and um so you can just cut them apart they're christmas labels for your packaging for your gifts under the tree for your happy mail for your calendar you know you can decorate the calendar there's just lots of fun and so each it, it'll come in a set of three rolls and each roll has different designs on each roll. And then I've got my binder that comes out with each collection. I've actually got a spiral notebook that can fit in the binder as well. I've got new mechanical pencil designs. They're my same ones that are just out now with, that came out with the B dots. And the binder, um, if you guys can't see, it's got the three hole punch and that's how it fits in the binder. Right. Or the yeah. notepad, sorry. The notebook, yeah, yeah, the notebook. And I've got, here's the charms and a puzzle. Let's see what else is there. <laughs> and the So Simple Shapes, of course. And of course my um, design boards I always do with each collection. And then there's, let's see, I skipped over. So, oh, I've got new vintage trim colors coming out insider and lettuce and oh the puzzle i do want to say something about the puzzle i brought my mom up again because she wanted a 500 piece so my past puzzles have been thousand piece puzzles but she said Lori, can you please do a 500 piece so this one is 500 pieces instead of a thousand piece and okay so now onto the quilt seeds for this And these are large, these are very large blocks. I wanted you to be able to make them individually. Also put them into a quilt if you wanted to, or also you could sew them into an actual stocking by just curving those bottom edges. Um, you know, grab one of my circle rulers and curve it after they've pieced, after you've pieced the whole stocking together, you could just quilt it up with the backing and then put it onto another quilted backing and they could be actual stockings. Um, you can embroider names in the background if you want to do it into a quilt to represent people in your family. I, I love this, these quilt seeds. I think that's going to be really fun. So the blocks are 22 inches by 40 inches, so they're pretty big. And then the finished quilt is 86 by 97. I think they would really be fun individually done too and just put as many quilts like I was talking about, the quilted ones. Um, for your quilt room you can just hang these above the sofa you could hang the mini quilts instead of actual stockings you could hang them from you know the railing you can put them sideways up and down you know do three do four whatever you want to do i i just think they're really fun okay okay so somebody asked for me to go over all the dates in the question in the question so b dots and hometown are in stock now. Mercantile right. will be in stock in December. Autumn very soon will be in stock April. 
and hometown holiday July 2024. So we got that question answered. Um, but I do want to announce our 2024 quilt along. So yeah, Yay. we're going to show you the quilt. So that's my first book, Quilty Fun. Yes. So we're going to have it's a our quilt anniversary. Yes. We're going to have a Quilty <laughs> Fun row along. So it's hard to believe, but it's been 10 years since we first published Lori Holt's Quilty Fun book. And um, Quilty Fun was the very first book that It's So Emma, that Lori published with It's So Emma. And it was the start of a creative partnership that has so far produced 11 books. Lori is going to show all 11 of them in a little bit. Oh, yeah. I got to grab those. Okay. And um, this row quilt starts with simple blocks and increases in skill level with each row. And tomorrow, actually, October 21st, is the 10th year that we have published books together so so awesome so we've really been working together 11 years because it does take a while to produce a book so to celebrate yeah, the anniversary <laughs> we're going to sew the bee in my bonnet row along quilt from the book from january to december of 2024 more details will come out but i will tell you that the very first row is the uh little patches and Lori will be doing a video on that technique in January and um, she's going to kick off the sew along with a video tutorial for um, the row one which is called four patches and then from there I will be showing blocks each week and more details will be coming. I wanted to name all of these. Um, we're going to have a kit. It will ship in December. Now What's amazing about this kit, it includes fabric from the B Cross Stitch Collection, B Basics Collection, B Dots Collection, B Plaid Collection, B Vintage Collection, Mercantile Collection, Prairie Collection, Hometown Collection, Cookbook Collection, Calico Collection, and Confetti Cottons. And so I will be sewing along. I'm so excited. So do you want to talk about the quilt and how you colored it? Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about this. It's going to be fun to um, revisit this. It's been so many years since I very first did this on my blog. I designed this quilt as a beginner quilt for my church group and then decided to put it on my blog for those of, for those who couldn't come to every class in my church group so they would have a place to refer to. And then I invited you all to do it with me since I was putting it on my blog, all of my blog followers. And it just grew from there. And then Kimberly uh, put it into a book <laughs> for me. And so now we're gonna revisit it. And how we colored this was just from fabrics from many different collections to show how they all go together. And I think your kit's going to be really fun because they'll just, it's not just one collection. It's just kind of a little bit of a lot of stuff <laughs> that goes together. And uh, so we kind of stuck with the same colors as much as we could um you know a little bit of variation but it's going to be the exact same layout exact same blocks and we'll just go in order of in of the blocks in the book right yeah and a huge thank you to sarah because sarah has been on this journey with Lori and i from the very beginning she has done all yes. 13 of Lori's books and um Lori and i could not do our partnership without sarah price so i totally agree i talk with sarah every day uh, many times <laughs> yeah mostly every day sometimes we'll skip a day but you know we're constantly always working on something and you know i'm i'm yes i'm working on an on a new book another book i'm always as soon as i finish one i'm on to the next one so um we're thinking it will be out next year sometime and that's all we're going to say about that but yeah i've been working on that for quite a while but do you want me to show you the books that i've done yeah so um show all 13 books and just keep talking i'm going to be right back Okay, so Quilty Fun was the first one. And so I think I put these in order. And then I did the Great Granny Squared book. And my next one was Farm Girl Vintage. And then after that is when I did my Scrappy Project Planner which, you know, we don't do, but that's in my, I'll talk to you about that when I, um, when I come to my, my uh, current book. 
and then spelling bee was next. And so, well, I'll tell you about that too. I'll, I'll talk about these after I show them to you. And then vintage Christmas. And then I did, after that, I did Farm Girl Vintage 2. Then I've got my smaller little booklets. Hang on. They're falling over in my basket. I did Kaleidoscope, and that's all with my B cross stitch. That was with one collection of fabric. And then these little booklets right here. And so there's a flea market, and that was with my, uh, sorry, this is prim and proper with my prim collection. And then here's flea market with my flea market collection. And then Quilter's Cottage. And I did that with um, my stitch collection. No, nope, Vintage House. I'm like, that was not right when I said that. That was with my Vintage Happy when I did the um, Vintage Housewife quilt. Okay, so that was with Vintage Happy too. And then my current book is Scrappiness is Happiness. And it has this scrappy project planner was like a planner that I did. It had like the calendar pages and things like that, plus six, six quilt patterns, which I, all six of those quilt patterns are now in this book. And this outlines my method of scrappy quilting and everything that I do with scrappy quilting. And so that's what's on in here as well. So everything is transferred from here onto into this book, except for the actual calendar pages. Okay. And then what I wanted to say about this book, this book, this book. And there's one more. And this book. Yes. They all have six and 12 inch blocks, which I've always traditionally done. You know, I started doing that. I remember when I did it very in the very beginning, I said, I know nobody's ever done this in a book that does six and 12 inch together and mix and match and interchange. And can we do this? And of course, Sarah was like, yeah, we'll figure it out. And Kimberly's like, I think that's a great idea. And so I've just continued on with that with many of my books. And so any of the quilt settings in here, you can use with any of the quilt settings in here, in here, and in here. They're all interchangeable books. Cause I really like my books like this, my big books too. I want you to keep them in your quilting library and just be able to be able to use them over and over again and not just be one hit wonders like, okay, I made a quilt out of it and then I'm gonna put it away and never open up my book again. And so that's kind of my goal for, you know, my big books. And so, yeah, anything else you wanna say about these books, Kimberly? I think I just wanna say thank you for letting us uh, be on this journey um, with you. I mean, I can remember, you know, coming to your house and just saying, oh, I can do that. And Sarah's looking at me like, we can? And I'm like, we're gonna we do can? it. We're gonna do it. Yeah. So I know you asked me and I'm like, I'm like, well, do you, you think you can do this and this and this? Cause I was, I had a very clear vision oh, yeah. of how I wanted my books. Yes. And we said, number we will one, do spiral all bound, <laughs> number one, spiral bound. Yeah. And I just, I wanted to set up my own photography. I wanted the photography to be done here so that I could, I'm like, if my name's on the book, I want it to come from me mm -hmm. and not look like it just came from, yeah, I designed it, but they, it comes from a publisher or something. Right. Do you know what I mean? And so I couldn't do it without you guys because you let me do what I want. And I love how my books look like they come from me, mm -hmm. but they come from you as well, mm -hmm. which is very quality. It's so Emma. Yeah, you guys are, you guys are the best. So I want to thank you for, you know, for allowing me to publish with you. So I'm gonna move into questions. Anita cracks me up because she said, we're not gonna be able to see Lori after she stacks up all the books. I know. <laughs> well, y'all know what I look like right now, right? So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm behind the fabric. <laughs> yeah, so I'm gonna go through some questions that came in beforehand and then to the ones that came oh. in. And then we're just gonna go until we get all the questions answered. So if you have a question, pop it in. Um, 
One of the questions we received before was, uh, stitching seems so effortless for Lori. What in stitching do you find challenging? Um, stitching actually is effortless for me because I love doing it. I'm passionate about it. And so I always have a cross stitch going. But um, challenging for me is deciding what I'm going to do and when I'm going to do it. So I'm always ever changing my schedule. Mm -hmm. If you watch my floss tubes, you know that I'm on the 400 year plan. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning <laughs> I'm going to have to live to be 400 to finish everything I want. But you know, then there's just always new things that I'm designing, the other designers. I love the cross stitch world because there's just so many beautiful charts out there whether they're new or old or have been around for years and years, it's classic and it never changes. Right now I'm working on my heritage wall. And so that takes up a lot of my time, but I enjoy every X that I do. And, um, and thank you for um, publishing my cross stitch patterns as well. Do you want to talk, this is a good thing to cover so we can have somewhere for people to always go back to, but can you talk about how I starch and how you starch? Because you do starch, oh. you just don't do crazy like Yeah, me. a lot of people think I don't starch, but I always, every piece of my fabric has starch on it. I just don't do super heavy starching mm -hmm. like Kimberly does. And she uses I Best Press. Just, I use Best Press, I use Mary Ellen's Best Press, and often I water it down, most of the time I do. So, meaning I use half and half with, um, water and I put it in a spray bottle and when I starch is right when I'm cutting my fabric. So I just, I just have to pull my fabric out and I, I starch it. So it gives a little bit of, um, body to it and it gives the wrinkle, it gets the wrinkles out because mm -hmm. I want to cut a flat piece of fabric. It gets any of the shrinking out. I don't pre-wash my fabrics. I don't need to anymore. It's just like, mm -hmm. there's such good quality fabrics out there now. I just don't pre-wash anymore. So I like to add the water to it and then apply my iron onto it. And that shrinks up the fabric, you know, uh, to, to the point before I cut it. Mm -hmm. Because if I cut my pieces and then starch them and then, and then apply heat onto it, is gonna shrink it. So I do starch my fabric. I just don't heavy, you know, super heavy starch. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, someone says they love the color of your feather weights. Feather weights. Do you have oh, any recommendations yeah. on where to buy them or have them painted? I do. You have to. Well, they're vintage machines, so you have to buy them at antique shops or online. And if you want to get them painted, that's an all an individual thing. You know, you can just. My advice on that is be diligent in searching for people who paint featherweights and they, they pop up every now and again. There's people who have been doing it for a long time. There's people who only have done it for a few times. It's, um, it's kind of an expensive process because it's a, it is a process. It's done with automotive paint. And so it takes months for it to cure and do things in between. You don't just like send your machine in and they, and they spray it with automotive paint and then they put the decals back and you get it on. It's quite the process. Um, Mr. Honey, my husband yeah. even painted one for my daughter and he was just like, I can see why this is a process and not a lot of people do it because it really is very time consuming because he would have to wait for several weeks before he could do the next step or, you know, things like that. And so he, he painted my daughter's, she wanted a pink one. So not the pink one that I have, the featherweight shop painted that pink one for me, but the other pink one that I have in, um, you can see in the photos in Quilty Fun. We've had that for a long time. That's Cassidy's machine and my husband painted that for her. But there's a couple of machines that I've got that my husband just bought online for me. So I don't know where they came from as surprises. And you just have to search. You just get on Google, Google's your best friend and put in painted featherweight and you're gonna find in your area, you know, what what you can find or, or you know, send your machine to or whatever. So. And that's I've, my advice on that. I've been at Lori's house before when Mr. Honey comes in the room and is like, oh, I got you a machine today. And she's like, what? Like he just, I mean, yeah, like the, he buys them too. Well, those are vintage machines. That's not the- That's not featherweights. Remember for a photo shoot for Scrappiness is Happiness, okay. but he's bringing up all the, he's bringing all the machines from the barn. So I keep them all in the barn, but it makes it sound like they're out there with farm animals or something. It's not, it's, uh, the barn is our storage, <laughs> our storage building. 
but I had it built like a barn because, yeah. you know, I'm a farm girl. So I'm like, if I have to build yeah. a, a shed, it's going to look like a barn and it has a loft in it and everything. So that's where we have our little Christmas and everything up there because I just live in a, in a small house. And so I don't have a lot of storage. Mm -hmm. And Kimberly, you've been here, you know, like I don't have a storage room in here. Everything is out in the barn. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so he, when he goes to the thrift shops around here, he'll take a picture of a colorful vintage sewing machine if he sees it. And he's like, do you have one like this? Do you like this? Do you want it? You know, yeah. and stuff like that. And sometimes if I'm not available, he'll just like bring it home. Yeah. Right. And he'll like, I just bought you this machine. It's green. I don't know if you have one, but it's green. He knows I love color, you know, uh -huh. like a vintage color. So yeah, I have a ton of vintage machines. I don't even know how many, but right. I love them. <laughs> yeah. Does, and they do remind me of old cars, you know, kind uh, of yeah. like the styles and yeah, yeah, I don't know, the colors, I guess, and the styles. Yeah. yeah. Who does your quilting and, oh, you just answered the other part of the question, but they want to know who does your quilting. Okay. So Julie Stubbs and recently she just, she used to live very close by me. And so now I have another one, Connie Atkinson, who's been doing some for my sew along quilts as well. So yeah, I do my smaller pieces quite often, um, meaning if they're table runners or pillow tops or something, then I'll just quilt them myself. But um, I like to just piece and then let all those talented long armors out there do all the magic on the quilting. Mm -hmm. If you could advise a fairly new quilter who wants to try applique for the first time, what would you suggest? And I will say Ashley is going to put in the links right now the video that you gave us yesterday so that you can talk about yeah. that, but that everybody can get to that video easily. Okay, yeah, I do have many, many videos on my YouTube channel on how I do my So Simple Shapes and my applique, but I did one specifically just to show you a very simple one and I talk about the whole process mm -hmm. and then I talk I show you how I either hand applique or machine applique and all in that video so um, that's the link that I gave you guys you asked me if I had one that was just specific for that and so yeah so there's the link and I have like I I do very many like I say on my channel so if you want to see my method all you have to do is go to my channel and find those they would like to know, and I think this 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 question is kind of funny because I already know the answer. How do you predict trends when you work on fabric so far in advance? Your all your collections are always on point. Love your work. Oh, thank you. But I I never predict trends. I just I don't sew for trendiness or anything like that. I simply design what I love in the style that I love, in the colors that I love, and then I hope you all love that. And that's just, that's just what I do. I, I'm not, I don't, I don't follow any of that stuff, like colors of the year, or I, I just, I don't do that. Yeah. I know, but Lori's always on trend, and I think she somehow predicts trends, and she doesn't even see that she does. I, <laughs> I just do what I love, and it's just, remember when we did the, we talked about this clear back when I did the Farm Girl Vintage, there was no farm stuff out. Oh yeah. Then, like when I did that. Right. And there was no farm anything. And but that's who I am. Right. And so I said to Kimberly, I wanna I wanna do this. I'm I'm a vintage farm girl because I'm a farm girl and I'm vintage, right? So I wanna do farm girl in the vintage style. And so that's what I did. And it was crazy because, you know, it it takes about a year, a year and a half at least, sometimes two, to pull a book together from the beginning mm -hmm. ideas to the actual, you know, publication. And by the time my book came out, there was farm stuff everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so then it made it look like, oh, I'm right on trend. But, right, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's happened a lot with several things. But, you know, I think I'm like everyone. We just love what, what we love. And all of my um, fabric collections and my books and my designs are about life and my childhood and family and things like that and that's what you know that's what we all love right so maybe that's i'm hoping why you feel a connection mm -hmm. to that you know to me and my designs and so that makes me happy when i hear the words let's make a scrappy quilt i automatically panic what are some tricks to make a perfect scrappy quilt 
Okay, so a scrap, all scrappy quilts are perfect to me. So because the point is, I don't feel stress when I do scraps. That means freedom to me because that be super matchy matchy. You know, I have to get like 10, 10 skews of fabric together that go together perfectly. I just do lots of different scraps and throw them together. And I talk about my methods and how I choose scrappy colors on my channel during um, my uh, Sew Your Stash series. Now in my book, Scrappiness is Happiness, I talk about my system. Mm -hmm. I talk about all of that, how I keep my fabric, how I cut my fabric, how I use my leftovers, how I'm using leftovers to put into my own kind of size pre-cuts, how I buy new fabric and put in with my old leftovers and how so I'm using fabric new and old all of the time. And so I do talk about that on my channel and outline it in my book. And it's the same system that I've used for years and years that I came up with a long time ago, so. And we have two photos we can show you of uh, your scrap closet, but this is really just one of your scrap closets. Oh, yeah, those that's are just, my bins that I talk one. about. I have two, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the bolts are out in the barn, right? Yeah. <laughs> my bolts of fabric are out in the barn. <laughs> yeah. But I just bought baskets that fit on the shelves that my husband built me these shelves, and I got these baskets from Target. And um, I do it by color. And those are my fat quarter in the bigger baskets there. Mm -hmm. That's my fat quarters or under anything bigger than that is on the bolt. And then on the baskets in the tall shelf up there is all my strips mm -hmm. that um, from leftover strips. And those are what I use most of the time. And most of the time those baskets don't even stay on my top shelf mm -hmm. because they're on my counter, you know, because that's what I cut out of when I'm doing my scrap quilts. Will you be designing a new so, a new seam so easy guide, which I love to be more accommodating for the Juki sewing machine so we don't have to remove it and reset it like a little lift door to change out our bobbin. <laughs> I, I've put it on the, mine on the Juki cause I bought, remember yeah. I bought a Juki. Oh, she, no, she, no, 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 she, she bought I two bought, Ju, okay. two Jukis, <laughs> two. <laughs> I'm not just kidding. Okay, so I bought the Juki for Kimberly to use when she comes here because you know I sew on my featherweight I do have a Bernina that I sew on when I do my quilting and things like that but I started using the Juki when I'm doing paper piecing because Kimberly's like I really like it for paper piecing so all of my paper piecing pads that I do through you guys and everything mm -hmm. then um I started doing that well then they came out with the platinum one Mm -hmm. Right? That's what you're talking about. Oh, uh, So yeah. I loved it so much. I'm like, okay, the white one is Kimberly's to use when she comes here. And the platinum is mine because that platinum looked vintage to me. So and I it's was still all in the that. box, I think. No, it's not in the box now. It We're, was when you it came was. last Okay, time. okay. Yeah. <laughs> she can just blame we'll pull it, me for we'll everything. We'll pull it cause... out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she can, she'll just tell Carrie, oh, it's Kimberly's fault. And he doesn't care. Well, Kimberly and I are are a lot of like, right? In so many ways and we're completely opposite in other oh, yeah. ways. And how how we sew, I mean, I can't believe it's t it's taken me over 10 years to get you to sew scrappy. And oh, now yeah. you are sewing scrappy like crazy and you're doing a fabulous right. job. And it just makes me smile every time I see you make scrap blocks. And I'm like, yes. And you know, you were like the person who said it, it's scary to me for yeah. Scrappy because yeah. you own a quilt shop and you're used to, okay, here's a collection. This is what I make out of this collection. Mm -hmm. So to intermix them can be scary, but it's not as hard. You can attest to that, right? It's right. not as hard as you may think. Yeah, yeah I think it's one and of those things it's you freeing. just have to do yeah. it. And then once you do it, yeah, you, you just have to jump in a little bit. Yeah. But so I always have to have the things that Kimberly loves to use when she comes over to my house. So. The yeah. sewing machine always had to have your starch here like i had mm -hmm. tons of starch here mm -hmm. and we always had it and then when you couldn't find it anymore remember when you went when they went through that shortage or yes. they changed i can't remember yes and so she I'm mailed like, well, me got starch. some steer and she's like mail it all to me <laughs> and so i sent all the starch i have like specific things that kimberly loves to use and i just have it in my little drawer right here <laughs> and when kimberly comes i just there's this is kimberly's drawer oh <laughs> Um, so the So Simple Shapes, you have the tutorials on your YouTube channel, channel, but somebody was asking, do they ever get discontinued? No, they're evergreen. And what okay. I mean by evergreen as a gardener, you know, evergreen means 
it always stays green. It always stays new. <laughs> okay, so we just got some super chats. So we got a super chat from Fatima Maria Pereira. Thank you. We got a super chat from Carol T. Love watching lovely ladies together. Thank you both. A super chat from Thank Lisa you. Najarin. Love, Lori, love your live streams. Thank you for sharing your love. Thank Super you. chat from DAS. Great live, live stream with the awesome LH. You have your mm -hmm. own initials now. You guys uh, are so sweet. <laughs> Susanna Pastor. Can I just be LH now? <laughs> yeah. Great live stream. Love all your stories. Okay. Uh, thank you to Donna Steptoe. She says thank you for all your great videos. And then, okay, so now we're going to the questions that have come in from today. So we've got Roberta Aerosmith. When will the new three ring planners be out? Are either of you planning an in-depth tutorial on how to use the quilting and cross stitch one? So I think they're gonna be out in two to three weeks. I'll let you answer on the yeah. tutorials. Last I heard that they were supposed to hit the warehouse next week sometime. And so, you know, then it has to take time to ship right. out to the shops and things like that. So I think we're pretty safe to say in a couple of weeks. Yeah. But tutorials, are you going to do tutorials on your channel on how to use them? Well, it's a calendar. So, yeah, I mean, I can, I'll, I'll do, I'll do something to show, but it's literally just a calendar where you just fill in your dates right. and yeah. And then the planner pages, you know, they just have, um, they just have a place for you to write. For instance, cross stitch, they have a place for you to write your colors you're using. They have like things for color changes, the, what cloth you're using, you, you know, just to plan out your projects, just like we all have pages on different things. You guys have yours, your, you know, your little planners, mm -hmm. your quilting ones and your cross stitch and stuff like that. So it's just things to keep track of your projects so that you have one place with all of them together in your binder to just as reference. You know, so yeah. Cariel asked, okay, so she wants to know if you need to make 16 each of the five inch and 10 inch, but you don't, no. you need 16 of the five inch and one of the 10 inch. Yeah, and so they're separate projects. The five inch are gonna go into the king size quilt for my bed. The 10 inch ones are going to be a table runner. Okay, I'm not, that one's confusing to me. Uh, okay, so when you were talking about putting that label on the back of your quilt, we have people asking if you fuse it on and you don't. Um, no, but you, you can if you want to, let me but see. I just don't find that necessary. So there's little stitches around that. I just literally press the seams under to the, using those stitch marks that I, that right. I, well, first I cut those and then I just press it under so it's not a raw edge, but you could just zigzag it on. You, you don't have to turn the edges under if you don't want. Right, if you so look there's at this a, picture, a Jordan. Ways. So on Quilty Fun, page 57, she actually tells you how to do it. And this is how it looks. Well, that's how I use my interfacing. Oh, that's interfacing, okay. So, so you just put the right side, so that's another method too, which I've shown. You just put the right sides onto your interfacing, so around the edges and you know, cut an X in your interfacing, not your label, turn it right side out and you, all the edges are turned under. Okay. But so it just depends on how you want to do it. There's so many different ways. You can just iron it on, you can turn it under, you can put it in your quilt. You could actually piece it into your batch. You know how you like to piece yours, your labels, Kimberly, mm -hmm. into the backs of your quilts. You could take these out there, you know, you can piece them in or just apply them on top before or after. Oh, sorry. You saw me say go to the top. Okay. When will the 14 oh, inch? Sorry, I was, I was like, talking, am I not talking loud? I was loud? talking I to Jordan. Were, when is I'm the like, 14? You're saying talk louder. <laughs> no. When is the 14 and a half inch trim it ruler available? I don't know the answer to that. I don't, that's the one we're using in the sew along. And typically if you don't get those before the sew along starts, you know, they're harder to find, but they'll, you know, they're always reordered right. and, you know, they come back in. We try to predict, you know, Riley Blake's really good at that. They try to predict, right. you know, how many they're going to need and then order way more than that and keep in stock. But, you know, you just can't predict that. So, right. And what are coming? Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that I try to do, especially with like Lori's stuff is I show it to you and then I tell you everything in advance. That way it gives you plenty of time. And so if we run out you had time to get it because just like Riley Blake, yeah. I can't predict. You have no idea. Like 
some stuff goes crazy. Some stuff. It's just like anything in life. You just never you know. You just don't know. You never know. If you spend your life trying to predict right. what everybody's going to do. Right. <laughs> it'll never happen. <laughs> yeah. Nadine asks, are you going to do a remix with the chicken shapes? I want to use them more than once and see what your creative mind comes up with. Oh, you could put those on anything. You can yeah. make pillows and uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't think And that's... you could mix them up, right? Like there's different tail feathers right. and different wings. wings. You could make, you could do like chicken paper dolls, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning, <laughs> Kimberly, you got to make these. I know no. you love chickens. <laughs> So I'm just saying you could put the right. different wings on a different chicken body and do you know what I mean? Right. And move them all around and have different different chickens. Or you yeah. could even just make the <laughs> quilt in a totally different fabric collection. It would look different. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've seen that done before and it looks super cute. So yeah. T Ward wants to know, do you produce flannels? The brown fabrics would make a wonderful flannel quilt. I did in Cozy Christmas collection, I did flannels oh, you way did. back then. And so we did like flannel pajamas and that okay. was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Because we always do matching pajamas in our family for Christmas Eve and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so that's really fun. So maybe in the future, but none right now is the answer. I don't know. Let's, let's, let's talk to Riley Blake about it and see if they want to do Blake. something like okay. that. Christopher, are you still on? He is. I'm sure he is. <laughs> uh, Gail asks, when you put your blocks together, do you have a system for deciding which colors to put together? Um, I talk about that. It's hard to, you know, yeah. you can't just really answer that in one question, but I do talk about that as I'm sewing my blocks mm -hmm. um, in my scrappy series, all of my blocks on my channel. I kind of talk about, okay, how I choose, and now I'm gonna put this one here because of this, mm -hmm. or because I talk about high contrast, low contrast, I talk about warm others and how I mix those in a block. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. One thing I would say is like, um, what Lori does can't necessarily be put into a box or a thing. Because when I first met Lori and she would, you know, she just does colors. I mean, they're just automatic to her. If you're in the room with her and she's sewing, she just automatically can put it all together. It's just part of Lori. And so, over time, I just would just like try to ask, remember when I would ask you stuff and you would just look at me like I was crazy. Like, no, I just well, do it. Like, I know I didn't look at you like you were crazy. Oh, I am. Yeah, I know. But I mean. It's because maybe because I didn't know how to answer that. Because, right. But it's innate. Let me tell you, I think everybody has the ability to do this. I just don't think we have the confidence. There's the difference. So if right. you just, and that's what I'm always telling you, Kimberly, and yeah. especially with the scrappy sewing, I'm right. like go with your gut like use your eye like you can see what you mm -hmm. like if you like it then put it together and that becomes your style and not someone else's you know and i've just been sewing scrappy for my whole life and i'm literally sewing and quilting putting quilt blocks together my whole life and so i think that's i guess where the confidence came from and my grandma and my aunts and my mom and my sisters would always have me choose their colors and stuff because they liked what I did. And so that gave me confidence. And so I think if we all can just jump in mm -hmm. and do what we like, then you'll love that block and you'll build your confidence and you don't have to worry about a set of rules about how I put things together, you know? Yeah. And then one thing Lori taught me years and years ago, we were shopping and she was like, I was like, should I buy this? And then I did the typical Kevin, where's it going to go? And Lori was like, if it's cute, buy you it. You do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. But she'll say, if it's cute, buy it. You'll find a place. And I think that's right. similar to quilting. And, you know, if you like it and you love it, you will somehow make it work in your life. You automatically said you want, you, you weren't listening to yourself. And that's what I would tell you. You right. automatically said you wanted it. Right. Or you wouldn't have asked me right. or sent me a picture. You're always texting me oh, pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Where can I put this? Do I like, you yeah. know, do you like this? And I'm like, do you like that? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then I'll, I'll give you suggestions on where it could go in your house. Right. You know, but I think we're all that way. You know, we're all a little bit hesitant until we build up our confidence and just have confidence in yourself mm -hmm. and don't wait for somebody to tell you, you know, tell you, yeah, that's right or that's wrong. Because there is no right or wrong in decorating. Right. You, you do what you love. You put in your home what you love and it becomes your home. Right. How did you become a Riley Blake fabric designer? Well, they contacted me and I met and I'm, 
I went and met with Brett and talked to him. And then I met with Cindy and talked to her. And it just was an automatic thing for me. Mm-hmm. I, I never looked back and I've never regretted my decision. I love being a Riley Blake designer. And I've been a Riley Blake designer for a long time, even before mm-hmm. I first mm-hmm. uh, book with you, Kimberly. Yeah, they've been so. in business 15 years this year. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't there in the very beginning, but almost. Almost, you know, yeah. I think really they had close. been. I they had been established for a year or two, and before I started designing my So Cherry collection, which was my first one. But it took a long time for that to come out, just for you know, because I was the first time. The process, you know, designer, you know, hand drawing all the stuff and the process, getting it into, you know, to the graphic artist to put it into. Yeah, you know, it's just, yeah. Tina Ford has a great comment. She says the quilt seeds would make a great cross stitch. Any plans? That's, I love that. If we could do that in those, um, the sewing room ones, those would be cute. Okay, let's, let me grab my, I'm just, I'm grabbing my pretend notebook because it's over there on my cross stitch plans yeah. and ideas. Well, Sarah's watching. She will, on, she will write that down. On number, I don't know, Sarah, would that be like number 121? You know, yeah. Like. <laughs> I don't, no, no, when I say 25, I mean for like next year. Or shit. Oh. oh. <laughs> it takes a long time because, yeah, it just takes a long time because, right. uh, not because you guys take a long time. But because I take a long time because I just have a lot of stuff going on. But and I like to intermix everything. You right. know, I love to quilt, crochet, and cross stitch. Those are my three yeah. my three loves along with a lot of other things put in there. And punch needle. I'm gonna be doing punch needle. Yeah. I'm excited about that. So when I do that, we'll we can talk about that later. Okay. But yeah. Jackie wants Okay, so Jackie says you mentioned a mechanical pencil. Will it be available soon? And I know that we have the mechanical pencils in stock now. You just have three colors now, and then you're going to have three more later, right? Yeah, so when I say colors, just the outline that, of the yeah, thing. That, they're a point, yeah, they're a point just, seven lead. I was just looking to they see have if they have any. They have an eraser. Oh, yeah. They have an eraser in there, a point seven lead. And um, so I love the pencils. Mm-hmm. And so I just every once in a while want to do you know, like three new, co- mm-hmm. they, so they come in a set of three right. and it comes with lead refills mm-hmm. and just every once in a while, I want to do some new pencils because they're perfect for tracing on my social mm-hmm. shapes for using in my, um, calendar, you know, my binder calendar. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm always using pencils. I never use a pen unless it's permanent right. <laughs> and I know it's going to be permanent right. when I enter things into my, my planners. Yeah. Autumn quilt seats will be released in April. That's one question. I'm making the hometown table topper. Do you use regular batting? That's one question, and I'll ask the second question after you answer that. Okay, I use 80-20 batting. Yeah. yeah, and it's just, it's thin. It's not thick because I like the thinner batting, mm-hmm. and for beds, it keeps you just as warm. It's just, it's not like the batting that we used to have to use, but mm-hmm. I use 80-20 and by 80-20, I mean 80% cotton and 20% polyester. Sometimes I'll use 100% cotton mm-hmm. for table runners or things like that. If you use 100% cotton for a quilt, it's very handy if you're hanging it on the wall, but I like how nice and flat it is. And so I use that often for table runners or placemats or things like that, but I want to lie very flat, yeah. Do you ever make par- prairie points? Um, I have in the past. I haven't for a long time, but I usually just piece flying geese or whatever like that, you know, and actually piece it into the quilt. But yeah, Prairie Point, I used to do those for a long time ago. Like I say, I've quilted for so long that I've pretty much done a lot of these things and everything comes in style, goes out of style. And when it comes back in style, it comes back in a just a little bit different way. But that's what's fun and exciting about quilting and always keeps me motivated and uh, keeps me creative. Do you have a Facebook page for us to follow? I don't get on pay- Facebook. I just, it's, I, I'm on Instagram and then I do my YouTube and my blog. And that's, mm-hmm. that's what I have time for social media. But I know that Kimberly, you do Facebook mm-hmm. all the time. So you do it a lot. Mm-hmm. And sh- she's always telling me about groups they have mm-hmm. of. I send her pictures of a lot of stuff that you guys make. Uh, when yeah. I'm at basketball games. And I'm like, where was this at? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 
Is there enough fabric in your kits to starch? I think it depends. If it's a well, Kimberly, you, you usually try to do that because you you starch, right? You know what so I mean? if it's and a so... kit that we cut at Fat Quarter Shop, you should have enough to starch, unless it's a Jolly Bar or a pre-cut that's like a charm pack or a layer cake, because those always shrink. I just somehow make it work. I just adjust the pattern because I could not sew anything if it's not starched one hundred percent. I won't even touch it. I mean, it's it's crazy. Yeah, and I I don't think the starching really because I. Like I just said, I starch all my fabric and that, you know, just not in your method, but it still shrinks the fabric. Right. I mean, that's just normal with anything, but, um, you know, you can adjust that. You can, you know, get a little bit extra or buy an extra pre-cut in case you, yeah, that's you what know, I know. everyone knows how you sew personally. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, if you cut fabric bigger and then trim down that you're going to need more fabric, you know, you know, that right. you just have to adjust that for how you personally sew. Right. Yeah. Mona Taylor says, Lori makes cheater cloth. Have you ever thought of making a cheater cloth of a panel like the autumn panel or how to build a crow, scarecrow panel? Well, well, yeah, that could easily be done, but then it would take you don't a pop, take get away. to do that. Yeah. yeah, it just would take, it's not an applique quilt. It's just a cheater cloth. It's just a picture of a quilt, yeah. which is fine. That has that, that place. That's what the cheater cloth is too. It's just a picture you know, a print of that quilt. Mm -hmm. But I love to applique. I love the process of applique. I love how applique and piecing look together. Yeah, I think it would and take the fun out of... for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just, that's just not what's, that's just not, I have done panels before of applique blocks, like to put into pillows mm -hmm. and things like that, that people have made quilts out of. So I did that with flea, my flea market collection. Mm -hmm. And so those were really fun, you know, and successful. And I saw a lot of you know, projects done with that. But I don't think I would ever just do a whole quilt for me personally. I think that's great if somebody else wants to do that. But I don't know. I should never say no on anything because sometimes, right. you know, there might be an instance that I would do something like that for a certain reason. But I don't I don't know if I would ever just stop the actual applique. <laughs> um, Kay says, she wanted to tell us that she won best in show last year at the fair with her my happy place it was a fun pattern oh, good. will it be available in cross stitch the my happy place i don't think it's on our list yet i don't know that might be one of our it, i i should have brought my book over but you know we don't want to reveal everything all the time right though right. because if i read everything on the list who knows when that's going to be available or when it's not so yeah, but we there's a lot there's always a lot of cross stitches right. planned and there's a lot half half done three quarters of the way done right <laughs> it's just that's how it goes yeah that's how it goes with designing yeah um, CJ asked if a lot of your stuff is beginner level and I would kind of just talk about like the level of I mean I think your stuff really ranges yeah. to beginner to intermediate it does. and that's kind of a hard question yeah. for me to answer because to me it's all piecing right so it's just there's just more pieces mm -hmm. so what's intermediate is you know what i mean mm -hmm. you just keep doing the same thing until that block is done right so you know you could say okay a beginner block only has you know six pieces in it okay well what if a block has 24 pieces in it that you still are doing the same thing you're just doing it for longer right <laughs> right i don't know does that even make yeah. sense but I don't have fancy angles or, you know, right. crazy things like that. I, I do easy corner triangles. I always tackle a block, look at it and find the easiest way to cut it and sew it and put it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cheryl would like to know if you will have any more zipper bag panels because she didn't see any today in your new collections. No, I, I will, but they're not right. in those collections, but yeah, the, that's a thing that I, you know, that I came up with um, and asked Ryder Blake if we could do, and they're like, sure, we can do that. And they're on the decorator weight there. Mm -hmm. That's the home deck fabric. And so that's, and uh, I'd love to be able to do that and just design the backs for the fronts and right. the zippers for them. And so they've been very fun and successful. Um, I do have another bag panel coming out. Um, and I always, that's my template. And so I'll be using that same template with the same size because I love that. So um, yeah, there's something in the future. You just haven't seen it yet. Yeah. <laughs> but are yeah. 
Are the bee ginghams evergreen and will the 10 inch stockers of bee ginghams come back in stock? You would ask Riley Blake about the pre-cuts for those, but yes, any collection that has the word B in front of it is is evergreen. Yeah, yeah and usually when they do that, the pre-cuts, once they're gone, they're gone, but they keep the yardage in stock. Yes, so you wanna get the pre-cuts first, you know, beforehand to keep them and then um, stock up on those. But again, what Kimberly said, you can always get yardage after that, mm -hmm. so. The quilted snowman is very tempting. Will there be a smaller wall hanging size? No, I don't think so. Just, you could make just the snowman, I guess, and not right. put all the stuff around it if you wanted it smaller. But the, to me, that is a wall. I mean, yeah. that is a wall hanging size. You know, I don't know if you meant like a miniature quilt or something, but yeah, yeah I think people just have to like get wall. creative and try to make it work. Cause like, she does so much she, like you can't just keep adding and adding and adding or she'll never sleep it's just so funny because and like i say i design what i like and the side mm -hmm. i use quilts on my walls all the time i have big quilts little mm -hmm. quilts and i put them all over my beds over my tables over my sofas and i decorate with quilts but i often um hear most of the time i hear people saying they want bigger bigger, quilts. <laughs> bigger. not smaller yes <laughs> yeah yes yeah is the thread count on your home decorator weight the same thread count as your cotton? I don't, I don't know, know about that. the thread count. I just I know. know it's good know quality either. fabric and it's a, yeah, yeah they're different either. because the threads automatically would be thicker because it's right. a thicker weight fabric. So I, I don't know. Do don't you know. have pets? <laughs> yeah. Okay, you tell do. them about and the I have, dog. And I have, grand, I have grand pets, too. Okay, tell them about <laughs> all the doggies. Okay, so I have Toby. And he and growls at me. He is half Chihuahua and half Shih Tzu. And he has the Chihuahua temperament. But he loves... They like to growl. I mean, he's not... Yeah. A, he doesn't bite. He he's doesn't not bite. mean. He sounds like he's going to be mean because yeah. how he communicates is through is through growling but it's the best way to describe it i don't know if it's a growl it's not snarling no. it's it's just a growl but he loves know, Kimberly's her just husband. Like, that dog's crazy but he loves kimberly no but he, he does not he you, loves kimberly. her your husband yes he no he decides what day he's just very temperamental that's true he'll be like yeah i love kimberly today and the next day he's just like nah no yeah, like sometimes he'll walk me. in her sewing room yeah. and just look at us and then just walk out like y'all. Yeah, he's like, just like, what no, are you guys doing? Not today. He's very like protective of our house. Like he's just like, who's here and what are you doing? And he doesn't like anything out of the ordinary or, yeah, you know, like the ordinary routine. That's what I mean. Yeah, it's just okay. kind of funny. Talk so about that's your, Toby. Yeah, talk about your grand dogs. And, and so my grand dogs are Cassidy and Caleb's I, and Ben's. My oldest son has um, Pixie. And so she comes, so whenever we have a family thing, we have a dog, a house full of dogs. And so we've got Pixie um, and my oldest son, Ben, and that's my granddaughter, Sophie's dad, my oldest son, Ben. And then um, Cassidy and Caleb have, have a bulldog and he's so adorable. And, sweet. and his name is Hank and he's huge and he's, yeah. And then they have Missy, who I just love. Delivery. Like I would, I'm just like, I want to adopt her. Huh? And Cassidy's like, no, you can't. Yeah, <laughs> but she was Car she was Carrie's. Um, my husband's name is Carrie, Mister Honey. She Missy is uh, is a poodle, mm -hmm. a, a baby, poodle. baby, little bitty. And she um, she was Carrie's mom's um, dog, and she Carrie's mom passed away a couple years ago when and when she got sick and couldn't take care of the dog right before she passed away. Then Cassidy and Caleb took her to take care of her mm -hmm. until Carrie's mom got well enough. And then she, and then she passed. And um, so they just kept the dog. So they have like this big bulldog and then this little poodle. And they're really <laughs> and, but cute. The little poodle's the boss, right? She's oh so, yeah. She's so adorable. Yeah. She's so cute. And the bulldog is yeah. so sweet. Like he's like he's a so teddy sweet. bear. They're both like super lap dogs, but Hank is, I don't even know how much he, weighs now but he's um, oh he's got he's heavy and big but he you know when they come over they'll run up missy will run up and jump in my lap and then he'll be like okay i'm coming up there and it's just like okay you're gonna knock me off my chair you know <laughs> well and, he doesn't know he's big yeah he and doesn't then, know he's big and then yeah. your dog will walk in the room and look and be like nah 
I'm going to leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, hmm. he hangs out with him for a minute and then he'll just be like, nah, I'm going outside or I'm going downstairs or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, Peggy wants to know if you're going to make a double wedding, double wedding ring quilt. Well, I have my cheater panel I did with that, with hometown. And we didn't show that, did we? Oh. But I, I forgot. I should have pulled that out. There's my storyboard. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to piece that together like I talked about, like with wallpaper. Sorry, I'm trying to find my, trying to find my. And we're sold board. out of it, but we have more coming. So it'll come back in stock soon. Okay. I'll just look yes. sure it sideways like that. So this is actual size. So you can kind of see actual sizes compared to, you know, the wall in my background, kind of mm -hmm. the scale of that. And yeah, but I just made a pillowcase out of that. Where is that? I, I don't know why I didn't think about pulling that in. But anyway, it's like, okay, so like that question before, right? It's just like a panel, I guess, mm -hmm. of a quilt. Mm -hmm. You can just put it on your bed and you can't tell that it wasn't pieced, that it was printed on. That's why they call them cheaters, I guess, huh? Yeah. Creative Mountain Mama wants to know if you can do a video on how you stay organized. Well, I do that a lot, meaning yeah. it's not just an organization right. video, but I talk about each, like in, in my Scrappiness is Happiness tutorials and in my book, it outlines. And if you mm -hmm. just saw my closet and my reasoning, I just said a few sentences on what it's like, but I go into detail about how I organize mm -hmm. my fabrics. Um, on my floss tubes, I talk about, I've shown where I keep my flosses, mm -hmm. how I, you know, how I do things and where I keep my things. I go into all of that in, in depth on my channel. So I have all of that already, but I keep organized because I'm a list maker mm -hmm. and I always use a planner. I've always, before there was even such a thing as planners, I've always right. carried a notebook around with me and wrote everything down. And Kimberly, Kimberly and I are a lot of like in that way. Mm -hmm. We always have to write everything down. Mm -hmm. I feel like every day it's like, okay, what's on my list for today? What's on my list? And then the, t the next day, what's on the list for today? It's like change the list, even though the list was already there. Yeah. Well, it, and on a personal note, I've probably said this before too, but it's hard for me to do <laughs> tutorials on my planner mm -hmm. and how I plan mm -hmm. because I have stuff in there that you guys can't see. Right. And I also sketch in my planners. When I get an idea, I sketch it right there. I mean, I'm drawing every day. I draw something, right. whether it's a quilt block or an applique block or just, or a little flower for a fabric or something. When I think of it, I sketch it down or else I'm mm -hmm. going to, you know, forget, forget it. it. And so it's hard for me. I can't just open things and say, yeah, this is how I do it without, I don't want to like do a double or a fake right. one that you can't see. So it's just kind of, yeah. 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 <laughs> We got some super chats. Bonnie Eisenhower says, love, love, love you two together. Thank you. Emily, I love us together too, Kimberly. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait till you can come out and visit again. <laughs> I know. Emily says, any tips for sewing room organization? Okay, you just answered that. Home Mom says, is there a new book stand color soon? So not soon not until the yellow sells out so when the yellow get the daisy gets a little bit lower we have one on the works are we there do. any new kitchen towels or towel panels planned um i don't have any um yet that are actually you know in the works but that's always something that i'm sure that i will do again because that's something that i really like and by the way, on my kitchen towel panels, those are easy to make into project bags as well. So mm -hmm. I kind of like to do things that double, mm -hmm. you know, for that. You can make placemats out of them, you know, all that stuff. When you applique, what weight of thread do you use? And do you have a favorite thread brand? I Yes, I definitely have a favorite thread brand. It's Arafil. I always, I've been using that for years, ever since I um, was handed it, handed Spools spool. of Arfil at Quilt Market, and they said we would love for you to try this. And I'm like, okay, yeah. you know, thread is thread. I'm like, first is it 100% cotton? And they're like, yes. And I said, okay, then I'll try it because I only like 100% cotton. And uh, my grandma taught me that a long time ago. And I'll just tell you what she said. She said that if you don't use natural fibers and natural fabric, that if you use like polyester thread or something like that 
then your appliques will start to lift off over years and over time because that's such strong thread for for a natural fiber that it will just little by little cut into that fabric. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It makes sense to me because I see a lot of applique quilts that those appliques start to lift off and it's because of mm -hmm. the thread. But, you know, now I don't want people to be like, oh, you know, that's just right. what I, all I do is just talk about what right. I've been taught and what works for me. But I like to use natural fibers. I love RFL because it's very strong mm -hmm. and 100 percent cotton and um, it's thin. And so that makes my blocks more accurate. Plus, I can wind more on a bobbin. So when you're <laughs> doing the applique, what weight do you use? Oh, sorry. So I use either 50 weight or 80 weight. OK, both works. You know, 80 is a little bit smaller. Sorry, am I taking way too long to answer these questions? I even no. forget some of the no, 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 some no. of the questions. <laughs> Tracy has a great idea. So if Christopher's watching, she wants to know if there's a 108 coming of the wedding ring. That would be amazing. I know it's not on the list yet, but that would be amazing. Yeah, talk to any if you guys have requests or anything like that. Riley Blake is very accessible. Mm -hmm. You know, you can just email them and ask them anything and those emails and messages get to who they need to get to. So yeah, when it comes to, I do the designing part, but when it comes to the producing part, they are the masters of that. So you can go to them and ask them. Yeah. And I think this is a great question. Um, do you only sew with your own fabric or do you sew with other designers fabrics? I don't. Yeah, I, I, I do sew with other designers yep. fabrics. I just don't have a lot of time to do that. And right. I just, but your first, I don't book buy full. Your first book was yeah, everyone else's fabrics, and then you because grew. I didn't have right. That's because I didn't have my own fabric. I had a few pieces, mm -hmm. and that's and they were inter integrated mm -hmm. into that. But I I rarely buy full collections of anybody else's, just because I've just learned over time. Even though I love that, it, it's like I'm doing my stuff, and so when am I ever going to get to that? Do you know what I mean? Right. But so I'll go to a quilt shop and I'll just buy a piece mm -hmm. here or there that I like that goes in with my mm -hmm. fabrics because I've learned that what I'll use and what I don't use. I've stopped just buying fabric that I love unless I know that I can put it in my scrap quilts or something like that because it just sits there. So that's kind of dumb, you know? Right, and you do have a rule, of course, I can't remember exactly what it is, but if you see something and it's a certain color, what do you buy? Like if it's a background, how much do you buy? If it's okay. just a piece, I know you have a rule on that. Yeah, if it's a background, I usually buy a half a yard or something like that um, or a yard of a background, but um, I I usually strictly use my own backgrounds now just because I have a ton and I've designed them for that purpose because I'm, I'm always, uh, I love backgrounds. Like I love backgrounds. I think they make a huge difference in how the quilt looks. And so I just, I have a, a bunch of B backgrounds and I add a lot of backgrounds to my collections. And so I don't really need to use other people's, but I would usually buy a yard or a half yard and then when I buy prints, I'll buy a fat quarter and bring it home and cut it up and put it into my baskets, which I talk about in my book and on my channel. Mm -hmm. But if I really super love it, I'll buy a half yard, bring it home and cut it in half. So I have a fat quarter to cut up mm -hmm. to add to my strip baskets and then keep a fat quarter and put it in those baskets. So that you saw in the photo. Yeah. Um, Christine asked, what is mercenized cotton thread used for why is it so thick i bought 50 weight comb thinking it was regular sewing thread i, have no I don't idea. know i don't either um okay so it looks like that's like all the questions so i want to remind everybody about okay. our coupon code if you spend 120 dollars or more at fat quarter shop through uh sunday we have this coupon code for you and you use it and you will get three of these stitch card boxes for free and we're going to give away three sets of three stitch card boxes and Lori oh, wow. gets to pick the question that you guys have to answer in the comments oh no pressure pressure yeah <laughs> you mean I just get to pick one like yeah just you just think have to one? what do you what do you want people to comment in the box so that when you read the comments you see okay um I hate asking things about favorite this or favorite that because it's hard. I don't know. What is, okay. I want to hear your comments about applique. Okay. 
Okay. I want to hear what your just just talk about applique. Yeah. That's Tell good. me what your biggest fear is. Tell me if you've done it, if you love my method, if you've never tried my method yeah. and why you haven't. What's holding you back or you know, just right. I don't know. Okay? Awesome. We'll talk about that. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Lori. All of us love you. And oh, um, thank you. We will see you soon, and I'll call you in a little bit. Thank you, everybody. Okay.